and Michael Remus. <laughs> hey, <laughs> what's up, everybody? <laughs> Welcome to Winnipeg Sports Talk Daily. Andrew Patterson, Michael Remus with you. Uh, good laughs coming into the show. Hopefully we can maintain for the next couple hours. Going to be a good one. We got a uh, pretty great matchup tonight. The 5-1-1 and one Detroit Red Wings. Hosting the Winnipeg Jets now at 3-3, three and three, coming off back-to-back -back wins. Overtime in Edmonton on Saturday night. And, uh, of course, the uh, win over the St. Louis Blues at home on Tuesday. Jets starting a quick two-game road trip out to Detroit and then to Montreal. We'll be all over it. Uh, we're just getting audio in from Detroit, so we'll hopefully have the coach, maybe a little bit of Kyle Connor coming up in the next little bit. Um, but as far as audio goes, um, later on in the program, we're going to really dive into um, Jets Chairman and Governor Mark Chipman's sit-down with Darren Drager, which um, has been released today by TSN. We saw a, snip of it, a snippet of it on Tuesday during the Winnipeg Jets TSN broadcast. And obviously this of, is of um, uh, a great interest and importance to uh, Winnipeg Jet fans and I'd say people in this community so we'll dive in. We're going to have Billick and, and Rowicki on. We'll kind of focus in more on the games and what's happening with the team. And then we'll let you all hear a number of the most important parts of the uh, the interview. Of course, the entire thing is up at TSN. I'm sure many of you have already watched or listened to it. Um, so we will dive into that and we'll obviously get response as well um, from all of you in the chat. Um, going to be a fun show, though. Uh, and we're back to it. A big slate in the National Hockey League tonight. We've got an NFL game to kick off the week between the Bucks and the Buffalo Bills. Uh, and we'll get to the cool bet lines a little on, later on today for those of us that are allowed to wager on sports. <clears throat> Unlike Shane Pinto, who just got clipped for 41 games from the Ottawa Senators. We'll dive into that in just a minute as well. Um, we do have plenty uh, off the top as we get ready for this game in Detroit and some other big news around the sports world. So just before we do that, welcome to everybody in chat. Awesome to see you all here with us. Hit that thumbs up button if you haven't already and make sure if maybe you're finding us after the fact, uh, hey, hit the subscribe button. We're here every day, 1 p.m., Monday to Friday with the latest on uh, the entire sports world, but with a real focus on our local teams and what's happening here in the PEG and in Manitoba. And we wouldn't be able to do it without the great sponsors that support us and this platform. Of course, our friends at Princess Auto, Cool Bet Canada, Consolidated Supply, Royal Sports, Little Brown Jug, Nick and Nicky DQ, F Apparel, Wallace and Wallace, Vita Health Fresh Market, Canadian Club, Manitoba Battery, Aquatech, Modern Man Barbershop, and we will get to a why not question of the day. I think it'll probably be uh, around Mark Chipman's interview a little later on. And we always do the why not question for not Autocorp over at Waverly and McGilvery. Let's get Michael Remus in here and uh, fire it up. What's going on, my friend? Feeling good, Huss. It was a nice uh, night off uh, of sports yesterday. One hockey game. Ovechkin getting closer to the, to you know, to the, what, Gretzky total. Uh, and what, uh, Jack Hughes, still awesome. But yeah, NBA underway, baseball off. So you kind of took it easy last night and another big night in the NHL tonight. Not quite 16 games with 15-minute <laughs> staggered starts, but uh, plenty of game action, including the Jets in Detroit at 6.30. So I I'm feeling good, Huss. You know, um, uh, we uh, I mean, the big news today, and we'll just quickly get to this, Shane Pinto um, suspended for 41 games for a violation of the NHL and the NHLPA's gambling policy and you know, we were joking on the lock shop. He may have been just watching and seeing how red hot I've been lately and jumping on our parlays and whatnot. By the way, it, 
Raptors and OKC coming through last night, a plus 316. When you're uh, when you're going well, you're going well. Um, but it, all joking aside, Reem, um, this was a bit of a shock today. And it's such a unique situation. First of all, the first significant gambling spo- uh, suspension we've seen in the National Hockey League. But also unique in that Shane Pinto does not have a contract right now with the Ottawa Senators. Is they're right up against the cap and have not been able to make the necessary maneuvers to get enough cap space to sign him at a deal he's willing to he's willing to sign. I mean, that was a uh, that was a bomb in the National Hockey League this morning, and I think a lot of information is still coming up about uh, uh, the uh, the circumstances surrounding it. Yeah, they you know there were reports right before they announced the suspension. I mean, this was uh, a massive suspension, forty one games, pretty pretty unheard of, and. But uh, some of the insiders reporting it, saying, oh, he's about to be suspended. And he thought, you know, when the NHL announced it, they would actually give you some detail. But there's really none here. Uh, and it, the National Hockey League announced today that it, it has suspended NHL player Shane Pinto for 41 games for activities relating to sports wagering. The league's investigation found no evidence that Pinto made any wagers on NHL games. The NHL considers this matter closed absent the emergence of new information and will have no further comment. And then the senators put out a statement as well that uh, Pinto, what, he apologized for his actions. And one thing that's interesting is he doesn't have a contract, as you said. So uh, what, do you think when he signs he can start serving it? No, no, they said it will start at the start of the regular season. And there's usually, usually that December 1 deadline for RFAs. If you're not under contract, you can't play in the season, you remember it happened with William Nylander. He signed like yeah. literally 30 mm-hmm. seconds before. They're waiving that for Pinto. So he can sign after his suspension and he'll still be able to play. So I'm not, you know, you're allowed to wager on sports, but he's, you know, suspended for, wa- you know, activities. What do they call it? Relating to sports wagering, whatever that means. So you have to wonder if he was betting through a proxy or relaying maybe information someone I, I have no idea this is pure speculation but it's just it's strange to be suspended for 41 games when he did not when where there's no evidence that he made any wagers himself here it, it's probably <clears throat> uh, there's a potential that it is information related mm-hmm. um and and again this is pure speculation but what 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 would bring us to this point um You know, if it had been found out that he had been giving information related to his team or something else in the National Hockey League that the general public might not have access to, that would certainly be a violation. I can tell you right now, he wasn't betting on hockey because if he was betting on the National Hockey League and at worst betting on the Ottawa Senators, he would be getting a lifetime ban. I mean, they are so, I mean, there really is no excuse for this. Because, I mean, listen, the players benefit greatly from legalized gambling and the amount of advertising that gambling companies do within broadcast, with teams. I mean, I'm pretty sure the Ottawa Senators were the first team in the National Hockey League to have a gambling sponsor on their helmet. It was Bet99 two years ago, and now I believe it's Betway or whatever. Um but the bottom line is that if you are, I mean, you'll get Pete Rose if you end up betting on hockey on your own team. So that won't be the case. Um, but unlike a lot of things, oh, a guy's suspended and just goes away, I think there will be more information coming out because I do think that both people involved and outside of the situation are going to want to know the details of just how, in fact, Pinto was uh, was popped and how they came to the... Um, determination that a half season suspension would be it and uh, I know that'll be something we'll uh, we'll kick around a little bit later on talking about uh, you know about it with uh, with Brandon and specifically with Billick I know he's got some takes so we'll uh, we'll look forward to have him uh, having him on it but um you know I know there's some people at Big Harry Bettman with all caps Bettman can't have it both ways um I mean it's very clear I mean, if you want to, and I mean, I think the leagues had no choice but to move forward embracing gambling. Um, You know, we've seen, you know, how it is around the world. Um, And for a long time before it was legal here in North America, outside of Las Vegas, um, you were able to bet on offshore books, um, you know, without, without problem and with a much better service, better odds, 
um, better everything than what we were given. I mean, let's not forget the government here in Manitoba and in Canada was more than happy for two decades to rip us off with garbage pro-line odds, knowing that there was absolutely no competition. I mean, this ended up being something that was just down and better for the consumer. And listen, there'll be people that bitch about the amount of you know, the amount of ads that you, you see. And I mean, it's less so now, but especially when things were legalized for the first time and you saw, I mean, what was it two seasons ago? I mean, you couldn't go one minute, you know, in a break, sometimes even during games without a reference to it. I mean, that was in a lot of ways, the wild west of all these companies coming in and a real battle for market share. So everyone was spending big time money. Well, you know who benefited from that? The National Hockey League, the National Hockey League Players Association and the players. But to do that, you have to have very strict rules because the second that you infringe with the integrity of the game or people think that things aren't on the up and up, never mind the gamblers will walk away from your sport, but fans will too. So I'm not surprised that the first suspension was a harsh one, Reem. It is very unique because it's Pinto and because of his contractual situation with the Ottawa Senators. But these players go into sessions in all sports where they are fully briefed and detailed on the consequences of doing things against the rules relating to their position as NHL players. And uh, obviously, Pinto violated that. And this was a uh, this this would have been heard loud and clear throughout the year and uh, throughout the league. And I'm not sure what the status is, um, you know, of what I, I really don't know the rules. I mean, whether guys are able to bet on the Sunday nighter in football, um, you know, can they bet on things outside of the NHL? I wouldn't be surprised if they could. But anything related to the sport or their teams, information wise and certainly betting on it is uh, not just frowned upon it is prohibited um, and they have to take those and they have to uphold those rules very seriously for the good of the game overall yeah you have to protect the integrity of the games there can't be ever any question that uh, something is compromised like i don't know for example let's say he had a friend who just kept betting on i don't know over shane pinto shots at two and a half or whatever it is every day and You know, you see him taking these egregious shots, you know, matching up with an account betting. Whatever happened, somebody's account got flagged for some reason, and the NHL thought, hey, we can't have this going on, and they suspended him for 41 games. He's not going to appeal, but it definitely, you know, when you see 41 games, uh, really, uh, really shocking number. That's half the season, and we'll have to see what happens. And for Ottawa, I mean, that's a guy they were kind of counting on uh, you know, kind of coming into the season, you know, having him part of their team. You know, this is Ottawa's year to take a step forward, and you don't have him in the lineup. That's certainly a blow to them, but uh, the NHL trying to protect uh, their sport. Uh, exactly. I mean, they, they, they have to do it. And, you know, I've seen there's a bunch, and Tyson Ducharme makes a great point. And we've had a couple of just incredible conversations with, uh, with the previous guests that we had on that wrote a book on this, but match fixing. Um, and, and listen, I think it's a lot more difficult. It would be a lot more difficult in hockey. I guess maybe if you had a goalie on the take, I mean, you could really significantly change, you know, the outcome of a game. Um, but certainly in soccer, it has been, um, a a plague in the sport at lower levels. And, um, you know, it's something that the NHL and every league in North America has to take very, very seriously. Here's the statement from the Ottawa Senators. We were made aware of the NHL investigation into this matter and additional information was made made available to the club upon the completion of the league's investigation yesterday. Shane's a value member of our hockey club, an engaging, intelligent young man who made poor decisions that have resulted in suspension by the NHL. We know he's remorseful for his mistakes. Uh, The Sens fully support the NHL's rules on gambling. While saddened to learn of this issue, the entire organization remains committed to Shane and will work together to do what is necessary to help provide the support to allow him to address his issues and become a strong contributor to our community. When the time is right and with the league's blessing, we will welcome him back to the organization. uh, That's it. it We'll welcome back to the organization and embrace him as one of our own. So uh, tough times for Pinto right now who doesn't have a contract. Um, but this is not a Sen story or a one-player story. This is a league story. This is a North American sports story. 
We saw a number of NFL suspensions handed out. And I know for a lot of people that said, well, if you're already there and you're allowed to do it, well, you know, they need to be a little bit more reasonable with the suspensions. We did see a number of suspensions that were overturned for NFL players who did not bet on the NFL, who were not betting on football or, you know, professional football, but betting on things like any of us would do on our phones, but from the team facility. And a player like Jamison uh, Williams of the Lions, who was suspended for the first six games of the year, and part of the suspension, he was injured. You're not allowed to rehab or work out with the club. They have curbed those rules a little bit. Um, so he's actually back now and was able to rehab there. So the NFL has tweaked their policy on this. But when it comes down to, I think, what we're talking about here, there's no tweaking. There's not even any gray area. It's very black and white. Yeah, and it seems like they thought maybe their game was compromised. And, you know, they get suspended for 41 games, laid it down, and we'll have to see. You know, we don't really know a lot of the details. Again, just a ton of speculation. They said he didn't bet on games himself, but was re- doing something related to sports wagering. Could be, you know, you could speculate all we want on that, so... Um, it was that was a shocker. Has forty one games again, biggest suspension ever, as you said, for what wagering in NHL. And we have seen, you know, we've seen in the NFL the last couple of years. Calvin Ridley got suspended a year. Uh, Jameson Williams and other uh, NFL players got suspended not for making bets at the team facility, and they had to make those rules a lot more clear. So I'm sure the NHL will take this t- take the steps to make sure players know what they can and can't do because. You know, it's pretty unavoidable these days, right? Sports wagering, it's everywhere. I can't watch, I can't turn on the TV without seeing a, seeing a prop or a line. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, is, it is everywhere. And listen, I get it. I mean, listen, I can't stand the same Sobeys commercial running every single game, um, you know, through, uh, throughout the year. I mean, we always joke. I mean, when it comes to re- repetitive commercials, who can ever forget Reem? The days of TSN Jets. Oh, the sticky. Remember the first year? The first year. Farmers so they put only. That, the, 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 the sticky. Bacon um, wave. <laughs> what are some of the other ones? There's There were some good ones uh, for the team. I mean, you saw them all the time. It was unavo- Everyone bought the sticky. It was unavoidable. Yeah, I mean, that. that's, I mean, we'll do, I, listen, we're going to talk about Mark Chipman's comments and we'll do a why not question of the day later on for that. But just now that we're talking about it, for those of you that remember, a bonus why not question of the day for not all the corporate wavering McGillivray. What were your favorite, your favorite infomercial ad from Mm -hmm. year one and two of the Jets on TSN? (laughs) Oh, I see Doug Phil with the zoomies in there. Zoomies. zoomies. Someone bought zoomies and had them at 1290. It was hilarious. (laughs) Slap Chop is in there and... You know, the commercial that you saw so often was uh, the one with Cassie Campbell and Gordon Miller. I paid a win, <laughs> played a win, Gordon. I Everyone, a win, Gordon. There were literally signs. <laughs> signs <laughs> of that. Oh, Jeff, Jeff says Netty Pot. I see Shake Weight from Jay, Jay Miller. These are some the good ones. The sh- the, listen, the Shake Weight is a top 10 hilarious commercial of all time. Yeah. I mean, if you, if you remember what was going on during the Shake Weight commercial, mm-hmm. I mean, uh, it's so good. Jeff Bowes with the Nutty Pot. I'm not sure if I remember the Nutty Pot as well. And yeah, Save on Foods, Save on Foods, brain, uh, brainwashing. Um, well, Dino uh, Apostolopoulos says Dr. J on CGOB. I, I maintain the Dr. J commercial, the original um, it's an award-winning the, commercial. The original jingle, one of the greatest radio ads of all time ever produced. And yes. uh, shout out to a certain regular in our chat, um, a loyal WST viewer who, uh, in fact, I know both of the voices uh, of, of that legendary commercial. Um, so shout out to them. We won't name <laughs> them in here, but... Uh, there's quite, yeah, Farmers Only was incredible. I mean, the cracks on all that. Is <laughs> Farmers Only still running right now? I don't, I have no idea. That's not my demographic. Has, has, has anyone ever participated <laughs> in Farmers Only? I would love to know. Oh, pulling it up right now. Farmersonly.com. City folks just don't get it. Single in the country? Enter your email. One of the best dating sites around. There you go. Farmers only. So, hey, they're still there. 
I would I would be interested to know. Oh, Flex Seal, great job by Leslie. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'd be interested to know, uh, you know, if some of those as seen on TV items are still in there. Isn't there a store in a mall that's just called as seen on Showcase. TV and it has all that stuff? Yeah, I think I bought something from there once. I forget what. Maybe a Snuggie. I might have might have got. I don't know. We've gotten <laughs> gotten way off track from Shane Pinto suspension to the number of gambling ads to repetitive commercials at during when you're watching Jets games. So I mean, you do see a lot of the commercials, and I mean, I don't know. It's pretty easy to me. I think it's pretty easy uh, to not bet, but for you know whatever reason, I don't know if Shane Pinto has a, a problem or, or what, but. Um, Put himself in a really bad spot and cost him some serious money there. Half a season. Huh? No doubt. Well, listen, we got we got a problem tonight. This is the Detroit Red Wings for the Winnipeg Jets. 5-1-1. One, and one. They should be 6-1 and one after what happened on Tuesday night. I will not revisit that, but I'm still angered. Um, but what we uh, – well, let's talk about this game quickly, and we'll kind of get into it more with Brandon. I do want to play a little bit of Scott Arneal and what we've got for it. But, um, listen, this, this Detroit team – I, I don't remember. We talked a lot about the club coming into this season. They're like, who's going to be that team that makes the real push for the playoffs? Is it going to be Buffalo? Is it going to be Ottawa? Is it going to be Detroit? And I'll be honest, I sort of had Buffalo and Ottawa a little bit higher than Detroit. It has not been that way out of the gate so far. This team robbed on Tuesday, but still 5-1-1. One, and one. And I mean, the biggest story has been Dylan Larkin and Alex Debrinkat tearing the league up 1-2 and two in league scoring and uh, a great start for the team in the Motor City that has not made the playoffs unbelievably since the 14-15 season. That's a long time. That's 14-15. That's like eight. After 21 straight years. Yeah, and it's kind of funny because I, you know, we're, we're going to talk about this Mark Chipman interview and he talked about how rebuilds can take a long time. And, it, you know, I thought Detroit's rebuild was going shorter than that. The Iser plan, uh, you know, you know, they haven't really gotten any of those top, you know, three picks. They haven't had that lottery luck. So... Taking a bit longer. They haven't got that superstar, but Alex Dobrynk had third in the league in points right now. Their power play, Scott O'Neill is going to talk about it, 40% to start the season. Uh, that is actually second in the league at 41.4 behind New Jersey. And Jack Hughes, who he's leading the league in points, and he's been absolutely insane. He's got 17 points in, what, like six six games? Yeah, something, he, he I guess, got a couple last night. Something, too, something stupid. But, yeah, Detroit. I mean, a shocking, and, you know, we talked about Ottawa. They were one of the teams that was going to take a step forward who didn't make the playoffs. Pittsburgh haven't gone off to the start, but uh, good for Detroit. Uh, as you said, 14-15 was the last year they made the playoffs. Yeah, that's what I heard earlier today. I'm pretty sure like that's six, the case. Six, seven years. That's a long time, man, for a team that had so much success. 21 straight seasons, multiple cups, and it just hit them uh, pretty hard. And you know they've been trying to rebuild, but I do think we talk about this. The Jets have had trouble in Detroit in the past, so I wouldn't take them lightly. No, well, uh, um, and just listen, speaking of betting lines, um, and we'll get to the cool bet lines a little later on. Yeah, we need But I have to lines. admit, I was quite surprised when we got into the lock shop and we were jumping on all these NHL games to see the Jets are the favorite tonight. Like, cool bet has the Jets as minus 122 favorites and Detroit plus 104 at home. Now, I know maybe the positive analytic numbers of the Jets so far, um, you know, have maybe made them feel people are sleeping on them, or at least the bookmakers. But, um, you know, I usually often follow the money when we're seeing uh, these lines come up. So uh, Jets favored right now, coming off two big wins. And listen, the biggest part of the Jets' recent success has been uh, the reemergence of Connor Hellebuck after a rough first week for the season for the Jets' Vezin Trophy winning goaltender. Um, Hellebuck's back at home tonight. He and Kyle Connor will be very much excited, looking to for, uh, forward to play in front of a ton of friends and family, I'm sure. And Hellebuck has been great in his last couple games. I mean, it wasn't as busy last game, but man, those breakaways on Jordan Cairo, some other big saves, he's in a good spot. But um, Scott Arneal, of course, holding it down as the interim head coach for Rick Bonus as he um, is back at home with his wife, Judy, recovering from a health issue over the course of the week. Um, Arnie met the media. I know Ken is on the road right now. Ken's going to join us tomorrow on the program, which will be great in between the Detroit and Montreal games. But uh, here's Arnie on the Red Wings, tonight's opponent for your Winnipeg Jets. Uh, first of all, that power play, uh, even though it's number two at 42%, uh, extremely dangerous, got to stay with the box. 
uh, make them play five on five. But the other side of it, uh, real deep in offensive talent. Uh, all four lines can score. Very mobile back end. So, uh, you know, a team that can transition quickly. They're, they're real good off the rush. So we're going to have to be really sharp on how we, uh, our puck management coming through those uh, neutral zones. How does Debrinket change the dynamic there, just with his goal scoring ability? Yeah, I mean he's a pure shooter. Um, you know he has ability to score from a lot of different areas on that on that weak side one timer. But he also has, uh, you know, he makes good plays. He him and Perron on one side, and then it's the uh, you know Larkin does a great job in the middle as a bumper, and, um, finds a lot of open ice for them. So it's a, that's a real strong unit. He's uh, you know he's an offensive guy that can. Uh, score off the rush. You know he's a shooter when he comes off that wing. So um, you know he's given them sort of another a lot more depth there on that offensive side of things. All right, there's Scott O'Neill talking about the Red Wings, and um, yeah, I mean they come in with that line: Larkin, DeBrincat, and Lucas Raymond. Uh, one of those first round picks where they didn't win the lottery. Still a darn good player, uh, and DeBrincat. They weren't sure whether he was going to play tonight, but as Kenny reported from Little Caesars this morning. He was out there for the morning skate, so he is expected to be back out there for the club. Um, uh, Rasmussen, Comfer, and old pal Andrew Kopp on line number two. Kopp playing on the wing right now. Joe Valeno, Daniel Sprong, and David Perron, the third line for the wings. And uh, Klim Costin, Austin Sarnik, and Christian Fisher. Um, the, the the blue line is where I'm really interested to see. I mean, obviously, we know Ben Sherratt well. He's on that third pairing with Jeff Petrie. Um, but the guy that I just can't stop watching and get enough is Moritz Sider. I mean, I think they did get one um, real. Remo, this is a wild pick. Check, check out what's going on there. Um, Justin Hole and Gostas Bear. And Gostas Bear, Brandon's old friend, uh, had a pretty nice start with, uh, with, the, with the Red Wings right now. So uh, keep your eye on if there's one player to watch outside of the forwards, number 53, Moritz Sider, who I think is going to be a Norris Trophy candidate for many years to come. As far as the Jets go, um, and this is all from Ken from this morning, uh, Mark Scheifele in the middle of Kyle Connor and Alex Iafallo, Vlad Nemetsnikov centering Cole Perfetti and Nikolai Ehlers, Adam Lowry with Nito Niederreiter and Mason Appleton, and the fourth line that popped two goals and was really, really impactful in the game against St. Louis, Rasmus Kapari, the flash of the NHL, the NHL's fastest man, along with Gustafson and Morgan Barron, Morrissey DeMello, Dylan Pionk, Sandberg Schmidt, Hellebuck gets the start, and I'd imagine this would indicate that in all likelihood, LB is going to get a little primetime look against the Montreal Canadiens on Saturday night, Reem. Yeah, look, they got to get him in at some point, maybe every three games. I don't know what they have, what they have planned, but uh, I would think Saturday, Montreal, an opponent who's not expected to make the playoffs, that would be a time, and you get Hellebuck in against Detroit. It's kind of funny how it's worked out. You know, you have Brossois starting against his former team, Vegas, and then you have maybe he would start uh, today, but what they have Hellebuck against his hometown team, Detroit, and then so throw in Brossois Saturday, Hockey Night in Canada, in Montreal. Again, not expected to make the playoffs, and then went back here Monday for Blake Wheeler's return i'm sure hellebuck will be in the net for that one so uh goalie rotation we'll see how it goes you know remember last year has like they just rode hellebuck so hard and um they seem not to have the confidence in the backup uh david riddich and i wonder if they'll show more confidence mm -hmm. in lauren brossois this year than they have in the past even when when brossois was here before well you know what i think a little bit too much is being made of that you're not wrong that they didn't have a lot of confidence in yeah. uh, in big save Dave down the road. But, I mean, for the most part of the season, they did. And he wasn't too bad early on. He had that He's terrible good. first start. And then I think he really played well in his starts for a couple a couple months. The fact of the matter was the team forced their hand. I mean, they played so poorly for that stretch of two months that they went from first place to being, you know, on the verge of missing the playoffs. And it, the playoffs basically started a month early for the Winnipeg Jets. And in the playoffs, you're not throwing your backup in. So it was Helly all day, all night, every time. And uh, hey, he got him to the finish line and got them there. But certainly that is not the way that they uh, drew things up. Listen, we're going to have Brandon week coming on. Again, we've got plenty of audio and video from the Mark Chipman interview with Darren Drager. We will get into that 
later on in the program after we uh, chop it up and look ahead to this game and get the latest on the club with Rewiki and with Scott Billick. And just before we bring in Scott, shout out to Derek Honer, the latest member of our WST Movember team. Guys, if you want to uh, have a little fun growing a stash for the month of November and to help us team up with Modern Man to try to raise some very important funds for men's health, come on down and join the WST team. Um, we've got some of our great regulars that are already in there, Leighton Janis and Derek Schmidt, um, just to name a couple. Um, so I think we've got about six guys or so. Wouldn't mind adding a couple more to the mix. So if you're a podcast listener and you want to join us, just send us an email at winnipegsportstalk at gmail.com. We'll follow the progress throughout, and uh, we'll try and take care of you guys as well with maybe a little package from our friends over at Modern Man. Of course, Modern Man Barbershop's now eight locations in Winnipeg. Um, new locations on Pemina Highway and Plessy Road. Love the Pemina location. Been there the last time. Great, great people over there. And the cutest dog I've seen in a barbershop in a long time. Uh, they've got it all. Haircuts, beard shaping, shaves, color services, and more. Make an appointment and book your look online at modernmanbarber.com. Um, our friends at Aquatech are synonymous with pools um, for obvious reasons, spas, hot tubs, and more. What you might not know, though, is that whole home renovations start with Aquatech as well. They've done so many thousands of renovations, in fact, is their foundation. And Aquatech can upgrade any space in your home. Um, if you're ready to enhance your kitchen, your bathroom, or even add a man cave to your home, visit aqua-tech.ca to learn more about their whole home renovations, including financing options. Um, we all knew that it was coming, folks, but when you looked out your window this morning, you saw the white stuff. And uh, while we didn't get it as bad as south of us or to the west, we all know that um, winter is just around the corner. Are you ready for it? Well, you better be, especially when it comes to uh, getting to and from everywhere you and your family need to go. And that all starts with a good battery. Manitoba Battery are the local experts when it comes to batteries with the best prices, bar none in the city, beating the pants off the big box stores and the best service in town as well, where you won't even need to leave your home to get the best price. All you need to do is go to manitobabattery.com. Check out all the batteries they've got, both car and truck, everything to get you through that long Winnipeg winter, and they'll deliver it to you for free with any purchase over 60 bucks in the, uh, in the, within the perimeter. Uh, it is really that simple. If you do want to get your battery tested to see whether you need one, where you're at right now, pop down and see him. Great staff. They'll be happy to help you out with Donnie and his crew at 1026 Logan Avenue. Again, manitobabattery.com, free delivery, anywhere in the city of Winnipeg with any purchase over $60. And, hey, um, we're going to be getting ready to uh, – I, I have a feeling there will be a lot of Canadian club enjoyed at this upcoming Bomber game on November 11th. It's going to be a little cold. People maybe need a little extra shot to keep themselves warm. Um, but, of course, Canadian club, huge sponsors of the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, is the official spirit of the club. Um but the Canadian club brand synonymous with the best in Canadian whiskey. And right now, for you whiskey lovers, get to your local Manitoba Liquor Marts because a limited one-time release of the 15-year-old Sherry Cass Canadian Club Invitation Series is on sale right now. It is $79.99 right now. Limited supplies available. So jump on that. If you've got a whiskey lover in the family, it might be a great Christmas gift. You can stroke that off the list already. Um, but again, it's in limited supplies. So get on down today to your local Manitoba Liquor Marts for the 15-year-old Sherry Cask Canadian Club Invitation Series. First one released this year. And again, Manitoba Liquor Marts for all the great Canadian Club products. And don't forget, CC and Ginger also available at your local beer store when you're popping in for some suds. All right, let's bring in the host of Skates and Plates, our guy, Brandon Rewicki. Got to be a bad hair day today for Brandon. He's got a hat on. <laughs> Just a lot of crying in the chat right now. Uh, hey, what's up, buddy? How are you? Hey, there's a lot of crying over here too, so I can uh, <laughs> I can relate. I got I got a haircut tomorrow, so you, you just caught me at a bad time. Um, so apologies, but I mean I can take the hat. I don't even know what it looks like right now. It's 
Ah, it's still it's you just it's you're still bringing it as always. We can make it work. I could do this if you if, if this is what the people want. Oh, look at that. That the people do want it, I think. All right. Yeah, let's, you know what? Look at it. that. Let's Boom. Do it. Just one little thing through it and you're good to uh, you're good to go. Don't take too much off. It's still in uh, fine form. <laughs> hey, let me ask you uh, right off the top, uh, you know, we knew that, you know, the team played quite well through those first four games. Um did not get that hellebuck level goaltending. Uh, in the first four. And I mean, listen, you can't hang it on one guy. You can always play better. You can always make more of a chance or two. Um, but they had sort of been goalied in a couple games, and that's usually a story that we're talking about on the other end. What have you thought about the turnaround, really, since five minutes into the Edmonton game on Saturday night, uh, and then the way Hellebuck and the entire team played on Thursday getting back to 500 and now looking to move forward and not leaving a sub 500 record in the rear view mirror from the first two weeks of the season. Yeah. Yeah. I don't even think it was the, the St. Louis game because I mean, the jets, I, I thought at least really took it to the blues pretty much the entire night. And the, the late goal there maybe changes a little bit as, as to how close that one was, but the Edmonton one was funny, Huss, because to me, that's like the quintessential hello buck stealing a game performance. A really ugly goal early on in the game that pisses him off. And then it's, okay, that was the last one. If we get three, it's it's curtains for you guys. And then he shut the door the rest of the way. Uh, I mean, a couple break. I mean, that first period could have been four, maybe even five goals behind him for the Oilers. We didn't make a handful of great saves. And that just allowed the team to kind of, you know, refine their, their sea legs. And they got going. And second period was actually, you know, one of their better per- periods against... Uh, Edmonton that they've had all season long so it's 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 kind of the danger when you have these shaky performances or even strong performances early in the season because it's all we have to go on and so either the like it's it's both ends of the spectrum right either you're you're celebrating too much if things are going good and you're panicking if things are going bad and I, and people were just a little bit scared maybe early on just because it's a couple weak ones you see the save percentages you know in the 800s um, but I, I wouldn't be too concerned. I, I think Hellebuck and, and the Jets are going to be just fine moving forward. And, and that Edmonton one, I just, I, I love, like, I don't know if there's any other, even the elite elite goalies, like he's in the top five, no doubt about it. But I, I feel like Hellebuck's the only one in the league when he lets in that softy early on that he's just like, <laughs> he, it's like a switch flips and it's all right, Dominic hashing time. Enjoy that because it zeroes the rest of the way. Yeah, I mean, listen, I don't even know if we can call that even a softie. I mean, that was a straight-up clapper from the slot from Darnell Just, Nurse. Just how he, he lost his net, and it was, yeah. you know, he was kind of all over the place. Well, and then yeah, right afterwards, and again, I was in the building for the game, and I mean, I'm sitting in a – although I will say this, there was a lot of Jet fans at that game at Edmonton, and and I was mentioning this to – um to my pal that I was uh, that I was looking at. By the way, I fixed the hoodie string for all of you uh, OCD <laughs> people in the chat. Um, you know, it, it was it, it, like it was a disastrous start. And I mean, five minutes into the game, I'm going like, oh, this is going to be a long, long night here um, <laughs> because we have seen games get away like that. But man, he made a couple saves later on in that first that you could just see that he was. Just re- not that he ever loses his confidence. I was going to say regains his confidence. <laughs> Connor Hellbuck will never not be the most confident person in any room that he is in. Um, but just to your point, like really did started feeling it. You know, they got that goal to get it to 2-1. Um, but then still, you know, we're hanging in. And I think being way more concerned about preventing the Oilers from doing Oiler things to them um, and taking advantage of what chances that they had. And obviously, they had the mishap from Stuart Skinner. Um, great play by uh, by Ayafalo to get it to Nemetsnikov. It's tied up. And um, <laughs> and then as we had quite a bit of fun with, uh, then they tried to start the wave at 2-2 with five minutes left in the game. That was the moment you knew this was going to end up for the uh, for the <laughs> Live bet the Jets. Live, Live bet the Jets right now. Um, but, you know, the St. Louis game, just before we kind of get into Detroit, um, a number of really positive things. The the one thing I'll say about Hellbuck is that game is a lot different if he doesn't shut the door on those two breakaways for Jordan Cairo. And Cairo is an absolute burner, first line player, eight year, eight million plus contract. I mean, that's a guy that St. Louis expects to produce in those situations. And you really had their best against the Jets' best, and Hellebuck got out there. I mean, so that that was big for them. But 
I'll tell you what, Brandon. I mean, leaving leaving the Edmonton game, I was talking about how impressed I was with the fourth line, with David Gustafson. To see Gus from that beautiful pass from Cole Perfetti, who I thought rebounded quite well. I mean, from we can talk about why it happened or not, but not seeing a lot of the ice at the end of the third period and in overtime, um, I thought he didn't show any loss of confidence in his game against St. Louis, and I thought played quite well. But, you know, to have Gus score, Kupari continues to be a difference maker in a lot of different ways. Morgan Barron out there late in the game, getting the uh, getting the empty netter. Uh, we talked a lot about the depth of this hockey team. And listen, they will go as far as Mark Scheifele and Connor Hellebuck and Josh Morrissey take them. But man, we're seeing a, a, a willingness of the coaching staff to play the fourth line consistently for all three periods in a way that, frankly, we haven't maybe ever um, here in Winnipeg. It's wild. And you know what? It's it's performances like that, too. Not, not that the Jets were in, in danger of losing that game against St. Louis, but look, Shifley and Connor aren't going to get two points every night. I mean, we've seen the, the struggles with the second line in terms of their production early on this season. Winning teams will get 30-some-odd points. You know what I mean? Like 25, 30 points from their fourth line over the course of a regular season. It's it's worth your weight in gold when you're a bubble playoff team. Like It, it can be those little margins that separate you from the also-rans at the end of the year. And I agree. I mean... I don't know, Huss. You'd have to convince me who the better fourth line was before this, but Kapari, to me, looks like he could be a third-line fixture if he was given the opportunity. Um, I mean, we've had, whether it's Morgan Barron being down there, you could have Mason Appleton down there, and like you said, Gus, with that beauty of a one-timer and a, and a, and a great feed, great vision from Perfetti there, there there's, there's enough depth on this team now, and it's really just solely based off that Dubois trade, right? Like, Think of the the depth piece. I mean, Velarde being the centerpiece is outstanding, but I mean, two massive depth acquisitions there. And I have follow who doesn't look all that out of place on the top line right now. And he's been tremendous every single game for the team this year. I think Kupari has just been a revelation for them on the fourth line. Um, it's 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 just nice to, to know that you can rely on some of the depth scoring on this team. Because, yeah, like I said earlier, you're, you're going to have nights where the top guys, for whatever reason, don't have it. And it gives you a shot. And then they've been given more than a shot from those guys so far this season. Yeah. And, you know, we had a great chat with Craig Button yesterday. <clears throat> and if you missed the show, I would definitely suggest going back and checking it out. Um, and, you know, and he, like many, very, very impressed. And you gave Shevel, they have a lot of credit for that trade. Um, and again, we're seeing this right now without Velarde there. I and mean, we saw how excellent he fit in with Shifley and Connor early on. And, you know, hopefully his recovery, you know, goes well and he's back as soon as possible. But, you know, you nailed it. I mean, I follow and Kapari with the con uh, the uh, contributions that they've made so far. Um, as well, I, I mean, we kind of don't talk about Niederreiter and Nemetsnikov very much, but, I mean, let's not forget, these guys came at the deadline last year. There was no guarantee that um, certainly Nemetsnikov would be back. Nino had one more year. They really fit in. And, I mean, that, that forward group, for all the people to talk about how Oh, this team just runs everything back. There's five of 12 players right now that weren't on the team at the start of March. And I think everyone can agree that this team, certainly depth-wise, is much, much better. Do they lose some of the offensive pop of Dubois at the second line? You know, we'll judge that in 50 or 60 games and see where things are. But I bring it back to the button conversation because, I mean, you know you've got the goaltender. Um, everyone's quite pleased with the forward group. Um, you know, if there's one place for this team to get better is the blue line right now. And I think Josh Morrissey, he may have played one of his best games, frankly, on Saturday night. I mean, 24, 25 minutes. I mean, a big part of that OT winner. Um, but we have seen big mistakes by Nate Schmidt, by Dylan DeMello this year, um, you know, in particular that have sort of been a little more spotlighted. Um, it really does seem like if there's a way to propel the Jets from where they are right now to that next level of contender, um, it would be with a significant improvement on the blue line, which is easy to say, um, but <laughs> it comes at a pretty significant cost right now. And, you know, I don't think that they're considering anything like that right now, just seven, eight games into the season. But as the season moves on, especially depending on what happens with that second line, I do wonder whether for the first time they seriously consider moving a more significant piece of the forward group 
to try to get a guy that can come in and either anchor the second pairing and potentially play with Josh Morrissey in a true one-two pairing, um, you know, in crunch time for the Winnipeg Jets. Yeah, I mean, you're you're preaching to the choir here. I, I'm, I feel like it's Groundhog Day because I, I kind of repeat this all the time on your show, but that, that to me is the missing piece with this team and has been for five years where they, they just haven't had that impact player to go behind whoever's on the top. Here. It shows how spoiled we kind of were back in 1718. When you look, everyone's all over. And listen, Tyler Myers had his ups and downs. He was a third pairing defenseman making six million at that time. Yeah. I mean, to have Buff and Truba and Myers on the right side and um very difficult to replace those guys. And, you know, as he said, I'm pretty optimistic that Billy Hanela can come in and make an impact at some point. But again, like if Billy comes in and plays regularly and holds his own, that's going to be a good thing. He's not just showing up and becoming a top pairing defenseman yeah. right away. Um, and, and, and that might be the most difficult thing to acquire right now in the National Hockey League. Like I don't know that there's a lot of teams out there right now that are looking to move top pairing defensemen. And I mean, we don't even really know what the cost is right now to it because it's so simply hard to get. Like that just doesn't happen. Yeah, I mean, look, it's why I thought last year the Jets should have went heavy in on Chikrin. Um, you know, obviously, there's the whole situation on what Arizona wanted compared to what other teams were willing to give and all that. But it was along that that line, Huss, and that they're just so rare when they're actually on the market that, you know what, well, let's overpay here. Because ultimately, it's going to be something that just becomes a major, major boon to us. And, you know, again, with the, you know, you look back at all the, the cup-winning teams, Huss, and everybody likes to talk about Vegas last year and how, hey, you need big defensemen, big defensemen, big defensemen. That's great. And I don't have a problem with, with having big dudes on the back end. But to me, it's more so that they have Petrangelo in the one hole, Shea Theodore right behind him. And you're having a stud guy out there on the ice on the blue line for, what, 45, 50 minutes of a hockey game? I I, I just I, – I think it's so, so rare to see a team – win a Stanley Cup and not have, never mind one, but two impact pieces on the blue line. And, I mean, look, it would be a, a big-time cost. There's no doubt about that. The Jets do have the prospects, though, and the picks to get it done. And and to me, I don't know who that is or if somebody's even available right now, but if somebody with, let's say, two, three years even left on a contract that can give you 25 minutes of, of high-level production each night... I don't think anybody needs to be off the table. Like, I, I think it's a move where you just go in and say, look, we've committed to Hellebuck and Shifley here. This might be seen as the missing piece. Let's get aggressive. Let's bring it in here and let's see if we can bridge the gap between us and, and the Dallas's and the Colorado's at the top of the division. Yeah. You know, listen, I mean, it's a, it's a really interesting conversation. You know, if you're going to make that sort of a move, if you're pushing, I mean, you got to think about the cap as well. Um, you know, whether you're thinking like, I, from my personal perspective, there are some guys that are off the table. Rucker McGrory's off the table. I, I mean, I think he needs to come in. He He's going to come in as a player that will be it. I, I think his, the type of player he is, is exactly what this city, this organization needs. And I would not want him to start as a pro somewhere else. Other again, maybe I'd say, well, oh, you you got a you know a big stud to come in for the next yeah. four or five years on your blue line. Okay, yeah. like put it this way, there'd be some guys I'd be more willing to consider than others. Of course, um, of course, yeah. But I, but I think you know in, in, in the cap world right now, um, you know if, if teams are looking to make that trade, and you got to think about who you're trading with and where they're at as well. Like, I have a feeling the ask for a player like that, you know, might be one of your prospects. It might be a pick, but it's probably talking about someone significant on your team right now. And, uh, I mean, listen, I'm not I'm not sitting here starting off, oh, they're going to consider trading Nikolai Ehlers, but Ehlers is a player that I think would have a lot of interest and has enough, um, enough cachet, enough ability, enough, you know, everything to his game. Like, that's probably where that ask starts for a piece of that value right now that we're talking about. Yeah, like, it, it's going to it's gonna hurt you. And, I mean, I, I like to lean more towards let's give up picks and prospects because as great as some of them are, they're not all going to pan out. And to get a proven guy back, 
I think you're going to win more often than not. Um, but I mean, like, I, I, you know, just trying to think of who some of those guys might be, and it would be great to get a righty there, no doubt. But I mean, easier said than done, <laughs> even when you're talking yeah. about, <laughs> you know, top pair defenseman, like, let's just get a lefty and who cares? But like, there was a lot of talk at the draft about Travis Sanheim coming to Philly. And I'm not even I'm not even the biggest Sanheim fan as as a Flyers fan. Um, but you know, he's put on 20 pounds over the summer. He's looked tremendous so far this year. Uh, you know, I, I wonder what the cost might be to bring somebody like that in. And especially in, in Winnipeg's situation, not only are you bringing in a Manitoban, um, but more importantly, I don't know the no trade contract situation, but he's got seven years left on that deal. So if you acquire him, he's not going anywhere. And that's, in a lot of cases for Winnipeg in a trade, that, that could be the best type of a situation. So it'll be interesting to see who some of those guys are, the, the names that get floated out there over the course of the season. I mean, it sounds like Calgary's going to lock up Hannafin as a pending free agent. That would be somebody that might interest you. But I'd be looking more at guys with term. Uh, it doesn't have to be six, seven years, even if it is two to three years. But we will see a few names get thrown out there, and I, I think this is this is definitely the time for the Jets to get aggressive here. And it might it might cost them a pretty penny. It might cost them a guy that they love in terms of a prospect that would fit in pretty quickly. But man, just just look at this decor and imagine slotting somebody in that can give you top pair quality play behind Josh Morrissey, and it's hard not to get super excited about. <laughs> The potential of, of what this team could do with how well they've played, how how much better they've they've shown us than I think a lot of us might have anticipated before the season got underway. Yeah, that's fair. Jeff Bowes, Hall for Larson. Be careful. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> point taken. Point taken. Um, and yours truly. Oh, OJ Simpson's in the chat. Uh, no prospect should be untouchable when pushing for a cup. I I, I get it. Uh, and listen, I guess I would agree with you on that. That's a dangerous game to play, especially for a team that, you know, that needs the prospects. And they hate, they turned a bunch. I think, you know, in the, we'll get to this in the Chipman interview a little later on. Uh, but turned five or six turn guys pro for the first time this year. I mean, that sort of, that thing has been funneled. And listen, not all of them are going to play. Um, there are some guys, though, that I think the team would be very, very hesitant to move. I guess the point I'm trying to make is let's the team's three and three right now. We're six games into the season. I'm not quite sure the time is now to uh, risk the entire future because this <laughs> team is knocking on the door of the cup, but things can change. And, you know, depending on how this team plays over the course of the next three and four months, it's going to make for some interesting conversations on this program and on skates and plates as we get closer to the trade deadline. But that's a long ways away tonight. Jets in Detroit should be a good one. Brandon, great having you on the program. Fill people in on what's cooking on uh, S&P. Yeah, we'll talk about selling the farm. Move everybody to get that demon. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> but no, we'll, we'll break down the, the Red Wings game tomorrow. And um, I, I know you got uh, Billick coming on with his absolute beauty of a dog in his sweater. Um, but there, the, the whole decentralizing of the draft, I, I, I couldn't even sleep last night. I was so worked up about it, Huss. So I, I'm going to... And shockingly, I'm actually maybe in a, a spot where most people wouldn't be in on this, but I, I, I just gotta, I gotta rant about that. So that'll be on the episode tomorrow. You're, you're, you're against it, obviously. No, no, I think it's great. I think people that are against it have lost their minds. I, I just, I can't. Yeah, it's, it's, it, it, it's so, it's so bewildering to me how, how I, I, maybe it's just like people are on the default position of we hate the NHL and everything they do, but I think, I think they're one thousand percent in the right here. You know, the, the, the one thing, I mean, it, it, I mean, I get why media people are bent about it. <clears throat> it is, um, I mean, it is such a great event. Uh, and, and it is so, I mean, it is essentially the one convention of professional hockey every single year where everybody is in the same place at the same time. And the ability to network, uh, meet people, create new connections, all of that is going to be lost for fans. I mean, for fans, there's no difference unless you were planning on going to the draft. Um, listen, I think it, it 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 it's unfortunate for the young players. I mean, that's always a really really cool thing to be there, to be the center of attention, to come out and get it. But it's not going to change. It's gonna save yeah. everybody a bunch of money. Like that at the end of the day. I mean, if you're concerned about teams saving money, 
great. Um, there's a lot of intangible things around it for people. And listen, I would say for the scouts, for people that work in hockey, it was sort of the highlight of that year as well. And, you know, unfortunately, all that is lost. But, I mean, for the average casual hockey fan, there's going to be absolutely nothing that changes. And if anything, in the local markets, they'll be able to make a much bigger deal about a draft party or some sort of an event because, you know, your general manager or whoever is probably going to be making the pick there in front of all of your people. So um, I think there will be some things. Selfishly, as someone that's been to it a number of times, it is such an amazing event um, from a media side of things. But, I mean, if I'm just an average fan, to me, this is kind of a non-story. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's the exact same draft is going to happen next year. There will just be two people there from each team instead of 40. I, I just like, I'm, I'm blown away how upset everybody is about this. Not to mention, I, I think the draft on TV has been a brutal watch for the past handful of years because we have to watch 45 people slowly saunter up there. Thank the cup winning team. Thank the host city. <laughs> Shout out to our draft party back there. Oh, by the way, we got this person over here. Oh, we've got this, like all this stuff. Like let's just except for the, the wings, process. except for the wings. Yeah, yeah, but like, let's just more insider like, Germany. And on top of it, we we might see the cap go up by ten mil instead of one mil every single year. Now that each team is saving like hundreds of thousands of dollars on <laughs> flights and hotels, so I, I just I can't believe there's this much uproar about it. Uh, no doubt. Well, listen, I'll look forward to uh, that on uh, skates and plates. Have a great one, man. Yeah, you too. Talk soon. There's Brandon Rowicki. Subscribe to Skates and Plates wherever you get your favorite podcasts. Um, we're going to get into uh, the uh, tonight's game and this roadie with uh, Scott Billick. Do not forget, though, Jets back at home on Monday, October 30th. Blake Wheeler's return. This will be a big game, I think, for you know longtime fans. Regardless of how you felt about how things ended with Blake Wheeler, there's no doubt that he's one of the most important, impactful players in Winnipeg Jets history. Um, so hopefully we get a good crowd of that. And it also should be a really fun game because for the first time in a long time, the Jets have had a real Halloween game uh, with it on the eve of Halloween. So if you've been uh, sitting around, we're going to hear from Mark Chipman later on, and we'll talk about that you know, as we go through. But um, if you are someone that's been thinking about getting out to a game, uh, the lone visit from an original six team, the New York Rangers, Wheeler's return, Halloween game, I think could be a good one. So hopefully we'll see you at the rink on uh, Monday and you know where to get tickets. You can go to the Jets site for that and find out more on ticket packages. If maybe all this talk lately is kind of nudged you closer to uh, maybe either for the first time or coming back to being a package holder. Um, let me shout out our friends at Vita Health Fresh Market. Listen, right now people getting a little sick. Change of seasons, Vita Health is the place to go. Uh, natural and organic supplements to help keep you healthy throughout the winter. Uh, beauty price, uh, beauty products, of course, groceries, and Winnipeg's largest selection of local products too. And there's six Vita Health Fresh Market stores waiting for you. And of course, you can shop online at myvita.ca, a fully shoppable website. Website. And if you order by 11 a.m. at myvita.ca, we got same day local delivery for you. Um, don't forget, though, uh, you mentioned stress and the change of seasons. Check out Health First Ashwagandha Supreme, known for its stress-lowering effects, reducing mental stress, anxiety, cortisol levels, and even stress-related food cravings. Health First Ashwagandha Supreme on sale all month at Vita Health Fresh Market. Pop down and see them. Inv empowering people to lead healthy lives. Six Winnipeg locations and online at myvita.ca. Um, you all know that Wallace and Wallace are the fencing experts in town. You've seen their trucks and fences all over the city. What you might not know is that they're also the experts in overhead garage doors with the largest selection in the city as the exclusive Clopay dealer here in Manitoba. That overhead garage door had lots of ups and downs in the summer, getting you and your family and all the fun things that you're doing. Well, that garage door is going to work a lot harder right now because winter puts much more stress on a garage door. The right time to prevent downtime is now. Call Wallace & Wallace to book your inspection and maintenance service call today for residential and commercial overhead door sales and service. There's only one name or two you need to know, and that is Wallace and & Wallace. And just before we bring in Scotty, um, you know, the snow is here. Winter's around the corner. The holiday season is not too far away. Um, how's the closet looking, fellas? 
if you're looking into it and realize eh, it might be time to up your menswear game, uh, there's only one place to go, and that is F Apparel downtown at 190 Smith Street. Um, custom suits beginning at 400 bucks, along with chinos, golf pants, custom shirts, both tucked and untucked styles, and an incredible, amazing selection of menswear accessories. It is all there at F Apparel waiting for you right now. And hey, quick note, if you're getting married or in a wedding party, make sure to talk to the experts at F about a 15% discount for the entire wedding party when you get your suits at F. Uh, make an appointment or check them out online at F Apparel. That's E-P-H apparel.com. And pop down and see him at 190 Smith Street. Oh, this is going to set the chat on, on fire. Scott Billick joining with a very special guest on the program today. Billick, uh, introduce us to uh, the third man in the booth. Well, uh, we need uh, we got to mute here. Oh, there we go. They got me muted. They had uh, this is this is my girl. I like to call her my bad bitch, but my uh, my wife just rolls her eyes every time I say that. So um, this is Phoebe, and everybody in the chat last week wanted to see the dog, so I figured I'd bring the dog in. So this yeah. is this. How old is Phoebe? Phoebe is eight now. She just turned eight. You just turned eight, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You did. Looks she's like eight. it. Looks like a real killer. She's yeah. She's uh. She 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 likes to. She likes to bark and bite, and she's a rescue, so she has her issues. But uh, I love her all the same, eh? Me? Yeah. Oh, Anyways, that is all that talk, it, that's all that it takes. Chat's to get, gonna go wild. Yeah. Chat completely, completely nuclear <laughs> no. right now. You gotta say hi. Phoebe, say hi. welcome, <laughs> welcome to the chat. Um, uh, let's let's get right to <laughs> it. Um, uh, you okay, know, with well, Phoebe running around, okay. you can pop back in as uh, as we need. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, Scott, when we talked last week, you know, we were speaking of a team that had played quite well, um, you know, for the most part, but had a one yeah. and three record so far. Um, how important do you think it is for where the team is at right now to have had the results they've had in the last two games and mostly the backing of a much improved Connor Hellebuck who looks like his old self after uh, two real strong games? Yeah, I mean, I, I think that's exactly it. Like, you know, I think you were in Edmonton last Saturday. Uh, you know, I don't think that game was – it probably could have gone a lot worse for the Jets. Um, it didn't start well, obviously, but those two uh, – you know, Kellen Hellbuck just put in a master class after allowing two shots on the first six – or two goals on the first six that he saw. And then it was just back to Hellebuck being Connor Hellebuck again, right? And – you know, I, I think they stole one, in my opinion, in, in Edmonton. But, I mean, I, they, they they played well enough to, to do it in the end. Um, and they just they made a few mistakes, right? And then you come into to Tuesday's game against the Blues, and, you know, the Blues aren't the best team. But um, at the same time, I mean, they're still, they're still a hockey team in the NHL. And, and, and the Jets played a really good game against them, right? Like, it was... A, to me, it was a full kind of 60-minute kind of game. Yeah, you know, they, they allowed a goal there in, in the third um, when they were up 3-1, but it was a bit of a fluke going off of Mason Appleton's stick right to Robert Thomas. So, yeah, I mean, I, you know, I look at it, and I'm like, Connor Hellbuck made two big saves in that St. Louis game with him up 2-0, two on, on, on Jordan Cairo on the breakaway. But I think after the Edmonton game, the Jets knew they, they, got, they, they came away with one that maybe they, they shouldn't have, but... But they got back to it, and and Hus, if I look at the, you know, at least four of the games that they've played this year, like they've played well enough to win. Like I, you know, I, I think you could easily make an argument this team should be four and or uh, four and two right now, um, just based off their play, just based off of the analytics and on all that stuff. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I still think, and I, you know, having watched this team now through six games, going through training camp with them again. Um, I think if this team plays the way they have in, you know, four, maybe even five of these games this season, yeah, four and a half, um, th that they're going to, they're going to come out on the right end of it. Um, and so, yeah, like, I, I think there's, there, there's, there's reason to be bullish on this team, right? Like I, I really do think that I, I think that even with Gabe Velarde out right now, the move to, with Alex Iafalo up to the, the top line has been really good. And, and, and it hasn't. And so here's the thing about Jets teams of the past, right? It was often that you would move a guy up from a line in the bottom six, let's say, up to the top line to cover off an injury, 
and then the team just kind of crumbled, right? Like it just it, it became a two line team again, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. The line that the line that lost a guy became right. well, yeah. certainly in the coach's eyes, almost unplayable. Exactly, and and so at that point, you know, the Jets are then trying to run two of their lines pretty much half the game and, and trying to find wins. But I, I didn't, I, and I think what we've seen in these games since Velarde went down. And maybe, you know, it was a bit of an adjustment with Mason Appleton moving up there, and I just don't think it was the right fit. But as soon as they moved IFL, they moved Appleton back down to the third line. That third line was tremendous against St. Louis, like just absolutely dominant against St. Louis. And it didn't take away from anything else because you still got that fourth line that plays, you know, quality minutes every night. Um, you know, the second line has been better. Um, I think they're still trying to get Nikolai Ehlers going on that line, but you saw – Obviously, I mean, it, you know, it was kind of a mixed, you know, bag of of Cole Perfetti to David Gustafson. But I, I think you're just you're seeing this team that that you, you you see a lot of these teams that 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 are deep maybe before something happens or they they look deep before something happens and then the injury really exposes the roster. I don't think that's the case right now. I think the Jets are a team that actually have some good depth. Like David Gustafson being the 13th forward and coming into the lineup and scoring a goal is something that we don't really we – we don't see that often with this team, especially in the past couple of years. So, yeah, I, I think right now this team is um, – I think this team is built to withstand some adversity, some injury adversity, and, and, and they haven't – I mean, you know, it would be unfair to say they haven't lost a bit of a step, especially on the power play. Um, but but I, I don't think they've lost much of a step five on five, and I think all four of their lines are still dangerous. And you know that, that that's a sign of a good team, Huss, in my opinion, or at least a team that has a lot more potential than the last couple seasons around. You here. know, you mentioned the power play, and let's just hit on special teams for a minute. Sure. Um, it, in a way, it, the first four games were so surprising because of how well the team played at five on five, how they carry play, how they had more opportunities. And, and listen, goaltending is a big part of penalty killing. Your best yeah. penalty killer is usually the guy between the pipes, but those results just simply weren't there. You mm -hmm. know, Kyle Hellebuck with a couple stronger games and the PK I thought in Edmonton was yeah. I mean, Kyle Hellebuck, PK, PK, Hellebuck, <laughs> however you want to call it. I mean, to do that against Edmonton, um, before the McDavid injury, that kept them in the game. And, and listen, Appleton took a terrible penalty. I mean, a high stick 200 yeah. feet away from your own goaltender. I mean, you can't do that anytime, especially against a team like Edmonton. But listen, they survived it. Um, but often the Jets would, you know, would really be making hay on special teams because their PK was so good. And if the power play was clicking, it would be there. How have you thought the power play has looked with Ehlers? Ehlers at times before has just not really fit with some of the players around yeah. for my money. And I know they haven't been lighting the lamp. I have thought that Ehlers looks a lot more comfortable and is moving the puck with Morrissey as well as with the uh, Shifley and Connor. It, it, it doesn't seem to be um, round peg square hole, if you will, um, like yeah. it may or square peg round hole, whatever the analogy is yeah. uh, the, yeah. the last little bit. And, and, and I've got some confidence that good things are coming for the power play, the way they move the puck and the way they've been able to generate some chances. Honestly, I think that top unit just needs a goal hus, right? Like I, I think, I think I, I honestly, I think Nikolai Ehlers just really needs a goal right big now. Time, I mean, you, big time. you got Kyle Connor and Mark Shifley with four piece this year and, 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 and you know, other guys, I uh, Alex, I follow with, with, with three. And then there's Ehlers who missed, you know, the entire, basically the entirety of training camp, right? I mean, yeah, he, he skated some days or whatever, but really, you know, he missed. And so there's a lot of catching up to do for Nikolai Ehlers. And I, I think part of having him on the top power play outside of the Velarde injury, of course, is, is an attempt to just get the confidence going again. And, and the one thing that we've always said about Nikolai Ehlers and the one thing that we've always questioned about this team in the past is, there's so much motion, in my opinion, when, when Nikolai Ehlers is on that top. Well, when he's on the power play to begin, because he's just a guy that moves a lot, right? And and he plays that that kind of half wall, come up to the point, come back down on, on, on the left side there and take that shot. Like, that's what he does. The problem in the past, and, and Brick Bonus has sort of alluded to this, is that him and, and, and Mark Scheife just don't coexist very well on it because they both want to play in that same position. Um, you know, I, I thought in the last game that you saw a, a, just a really, or maybe it was in the Edmonton game, 
um, that you saw that really that, that really nice tic tac toe. But I think it was between Ehlers, Shifley, and and was it Ayafala who scored that goal? Um, I, I'm, I'm I'm drawing a blank there, but it was a it was a beautiful goal between at least two of the at least between Ehlers and and Shifley. And so those are the types of things like they they can be successful together on the same power play unit, right? But they both have to want to be. And and I think now this year, I, I think there is more of a sense of, of that's the case. Like I don't. I don't uh, one. There's room for it right now, obviously with Velarde, and I think once Velarde comes back, I think that's a back, really good point you're making right now. <laughs> I really yeah. do. Yeah, it's just I mean, I, you know, I, I think they just got to coexist, right? And I think that's that's been part of the thing. I think that's been the issue in the past. I think Rick Bonus has talked about it a little bit, because um, yeah, and 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 when you start wanting to play like a team and just wanting to actually, you know, just win and doesn't matter who's doing whatever, I I I, I I think that they can do it. And I think Nikolai Ehlers, yeah, I think he's just off to a tough start this year because of training camp. I know people like to crap on him and stuff like that. And, you know, he's always injured or whatever. I mean, but, you know, you got. I think the same of Nate Schmidt. I think Nate Schmidt was off to a bit of a slow start this year too because he just hampered in, hampered in training camp. This happens, right? Um, and, but yeah, you know, I, I like the power play. I just don't know if it's been rewarded enough yet, right? And 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 that well, we know it hasn't been really rewarded enough. But on the goals that they've scored this year, there's been some nice goals. So um, obviously the Josh Morrissey won the last game. I think there was a second left. Uh, it was that in well, that was in in, in Edmonton, right? But um, a second left in the dry sidle penalty, if I'm not mistaken. But you know, it's just a nice shot. Like like it's there. There's it's there for this team to kind of. Take. And I think, again, once this team starts getting going on the power play, and we've said this a lot times, but we've seen when this team is clicking on the power play, it's hard to beat this team, right? Because, I mean, you're getting four power plays a game. If they go two for four a few nights in a row, you're, you're probably winning a lot of those games. So it's not as prolific as, as, as Edmonton's, obviously. They don't have, you know, you know, two Hart Trophy kind of winners on it, and, and nobody is ever going to be. But I think the Jets have enough talent. Um, especially on that top unit, well, you know, they just need them to, they just need them to, to play together nicely. That's all. Um, yeah. Let's just say that. You know, um, <laughs> you, you mentioned they're not as prolific as Edmonton. You know who they're not as prolific this year is, is the Detroit Red Wings. Who oh, unreal. Man. Right yeah. now are second in the league, Scott, with a 41.4% success rate on the power play. Um, listen, I didn't have uh, Dylan Larkin and Alex DeBrincat sniffing around the scoring lead, uh, you know, a right. few weeks into the season. I mean, the homecoming for DeBrincat has been a huge, huge boost for a Bruce for Detroit. But, um, yeah. I mean, just maybe thoughts on this game and the challenge for Winnipeg to go into a spot against a much better Red Wings team this year in – a place yeah. that even when they have been significant favorites in the past have not always uh, come out with uh, their best performances. Yeah, I was there last year for this game. And, you know, I, I think part of what you, well, last year, last year I watched Cole Perfetti come out of the game and he played the game, but man, that guy was sick, right? He was trying to go and see family and after the game, because it's a big family event, that game. Um, you get you get there and you, you see it even pregame and, and obviously postgame when we go down um, in that arena because they have all the, they have this kind of almost a pen really area where all the family sits and and because you have well obviously Kyle, or Connor Hellebuck and Kyle Connor and used to be Andrew Cop um, you know all these Michigan guys right that play there so there's a ton of family waiting to see them but this game isn't too far from Kitchener it's not too far from Whitby right like. So you got other players, you know, like Perfetti's and, and the Shifley's and whatever. You know, I, I think we've watched this team go in there and win before, and we've watched them also go in there and, and lose when they should, probably should have won. I, I, I do wonder just – it's a big game. It's a big game for a lot of these players on the Jets because there's just a lot of people there. But, you know, tonight's, tonight's game's interesting. I, you know, it, this Detroit team analytically, not great, um, but on the ice and in the record, 5-1-1 one one right now, really good. Um, you know, Alex debrink has got nine goals. Dylan Larkin's got 14 points right now. Shane Gostisper has risen from the grave. He's like Lazarus out there. Like, I mean, he's this is a guy who's he's got like nine points, three goals throughout the you know seven games this year. Like, I mean, here's a guy who's been put in a good situation and has kind of really re, re well through seven games, let's say, but has really kind of reinvigorated his own career. 
Detroit's going to be a beast, man. Like, Detroit is going to be a good team. I think Steve Eiserman has put his stamp on it over the years. I mean, you know, you look at Eiserman, what he did in Tampa um, before leaving there and coming back to the, the place that he spent his whole playing career in Detroit. Uh, I, I think there's a lot of I, I think there's a lot of potential for this Detroit team, and so this isn't just a this isn't a Detroit of the last few years where you, you'd expect the Jets team to kind of go in there and win. It's gonna be a tough matchup tonight, Huss. Um, you know they they got good goaltending. I think James Reimer's playing tonight. He's been lights out to start the the season. Two and zero. I think his save percentage is like the nine sixties right now, um, and and he always seems to play well against the Jets. So. It's a tough one. Yeah. It, it's it's going to be a tough game. He did last year. I, I said, oh, Reimer's starting. That's nice. And I remembered yeah. what <laughs> he like did last year. Right? I mean, he yeah. was uh, he was out of his mind. That being said, uh, I think we're uh, looking for the Jets to have the best goaltender in this game. And this is a big game. We talk about all the yep. Ontario guys that come down there. Let's face it. This is big for Hellebuck. This is big for Kyle Connor. Sure. They'll have a ton of uh, friends, family that are there at the game, and they'll want to show out for them. I expect big games from both of them. Um, yep. But I also, just speaking of Hellebuck for a minute, and we kind of talked about how well that he's good, uh, how, well, how well he's played and been, um, yeah. I believe this is going to set up a uh, pretty juicy spot for Loren Brassois to get into the win column and have a lot of friends and family, even if they're not there, getting a chance to watch him yeah. Saturday night against Les Canadiens in Montreal. Yeah, yeah, and uh, that seems to be a plan. Um, you know, I suspect that that's how it goes. And then Hellebuck plays Monday against Blake Wheeler and the Rangers uh, and, and Wheeler's return. But, yeah, I mean, Rick Bonus had said, and I know he's not with the team at the moment, but, you know, this coaching staff is basically Rick Bonus, and it's just other people talking for him sometimes. So it, it's, um, yeah, it, it, you know, it, Laurent Brassois, I thought he played good against Vegas, and, and it just, you know, you take a bad penalty at the end there. Jack well, Logan Eichel Thompson one. was insane and, in that and game. Exactly. And Logan Thompson makes two, well, one save of the year candidate for sure. And I think underrated was that blocker save. I mean, that blocker save was just as nice. It just yeah. wasn't as flashy as, a, you know, whipping out the paddle there and, and, and making a save. But you're right. I mean, I thought Lauren Brassois played a good game. And, and I, you know, I, I don't feel like there's a lot of drop-off between the two. I mean, obviously, you know, Connor Hellbuck is who he is, but... But Lauren Brassois has always been a good backup in this town, in this league. I mean, we saw him last year. He outdueled Connor Hellbuck in the playoffs last year. So, but yeah, you know, I, I think it, it's a nice spot for, for Brassois to go in, Hockey Night in Canada, um, you know, play the Habs, uh, you know, at Bell Center. Um, and yeah, just a chance for him, exactly. To I, I think, I, I don't think he felt, I, I, he wasn't necessarily upset with the way that he played uh, against Vegas. I think he was just upset with the result, but you know, you walk into a Habs team, but it, you know this is a team that the Jets can't on Saturday. You can't take them for granted. I think it was last year, or maybe the year before, where they went into Montreal and got pounded. Was it seven one? I think um, in one of the games a couple of years ago. So, um, if not last year, so you know it, it's not a team where you can take lightly, right? But I, I do. I, I see a path right now by the end of Monday that the Jets are six three and zero, right? And and you're not really thinking about you know, maybe the, the two and three start to the season, right? I, and, and and a couple of losses or that L.A. loss. I think people still wonder, you know, I, I think if this team plays as well as, as it has been through, through, you know, four, let's say six of the games, I think they could be six and three by Monday. And and I think there's going to be a lot. Monday's game is the most intriguing one for me, of course. I mean, there's lots of time to, to talk to that, but that's an intriguing game because, I mean, Blake Wheeler isn't playing a lot there. <laughs> right now but he's coming back you know back to the town he played and captain for years and all that that's an intriguing game and and i you know i think that i, I wonder i mean i i i wonder about the reception i think the reception is going to be fine for blake i mean it's oh, not yeah. like he he left he was bought out it is what it is but but i think you know i think it's one of those games that, that the jets are really going to be up for to kind of yeah, well, probably, you know, stick it we, to their old Wheeler's friend. just lucky is Mike Babcock is isn't his coach because he'd probably <laughs> healthy scratch him for that game coming back. <laughs> oh, can you imagine? <laughs> hey, um, hey, listen, just before yeah. we go, and I saw you tweeting about this before today. Um, what um, what did you think of Shane Pinto getting clipped you know, for forty one games? Uh, Huss, I, I I hate I hate you know. Like I'm not, I'm not a better, right? And I know you have a show and 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 that uh, you do the lockstep and all that, and I, I have no problem with that, right? Like I don't have a problem, but but like, and maybe you don't. Maybe you disagree with this. Maybe not. I I think 
first of all, I don't like the fact that, like, I mean, why, why can't he bet about, well, for, I guess we should say off the top that we don't really know exactly what the problem was because I don't think that, I don't think that they've come out and exactly said what is the part because he didn't bet on hockey. They've made that clear. The yeah. NHL said that in their, in their statement that he didn't bet on hockey. You get a lifetime suspension for that. Of course you do. Yeah, exactly. And, and we, the, that, the hammer that Gary Bettman would have swung would have been completely different. So I'd like to know why he got it. But I think we're living in a time right now, like, I mean, is it not ironic? Not not ironic. It, it, it's crazy to me that the Ottawa Senators have, I think it's Betway uh, on, on, their, on their helmets, right? I mean, it, it, this has taken over, betting has taken over sports, right? I mean, uh, it was always kind of in the background before and, and whatever, it's fine. But I think you're going to eventually catch people, whether it's, you know, a, 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 a 50 or 60 year old or, or, or a younger player, like, you know, or a younger person like Shane Pinto. And I don't know. I, I don't know the, 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 how we got to this point or if it's a problem for him, you know, if it's an addiction or whatever, I, I you know, I think we need to be careful on, on some of these things, but I just, I, I wonder why, first of all, why this is the case. And two, if we're just not seeing some of the residue, I, let's say, of you know it being constantly inundated with this stuff and 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 that's sort of where i'm at with it i mean and you know i, I don't i don't gamble i i you know, very rarely i mean fantasy football if you call that gambling i mean i don't i mean it's just a you know it's a fun thing you do with friends but i mean i i, like, I understand it can be a problem with people for people and and i just wonder i, I want to know what he betted on but you know i just i don't know it, it, it's a tough one because i i, I think I think we're just in a world right now where there's not a lot of there's not a lot of oversight on like there's obviously a lot of oversight on gambling, but what's what's the other what's the other end of it where it's like you know right at the end of the commercial gamble responsibly, right? Well, I mean, like for some people, maybe that's it, it's difficult. I I don't know, right? Like so. Oh yeah, listen, you know, it, it, it I, is I'm for just... sure that like when they and again, this was happening already. So it was like, okay, do yeah. they accept it and get involved with it? And do the players get paid from it and the National Hockey League benefits from it? Um, I think they very clearly followed the path of some of the other leagues and saying, hey, you can either ignore it or yeah. you can benefit from it, and they will. Um, but with that comes responsibility. And, like, listen, there's yeah. not a player in this league that is not completely briefed with the seriousness of, of all of that. So it, it is somewhat of a mistake. And listen, I get that there's a ton of betting ads and, and it is annoying to a lot of people that, that you know, don't care, even me. Like, listen, I mean, I bet mainly at Cool Bet, who's a sponsor yeah. of ours and we do stuff there. I mean, I see a million 365 or whatever ads coming yeah. up. Um, but I'm no less bothered by that than I played a wind gourd or I mean, we had a hilarious <laughs> conversation at the start, just talking about ads and then remembering the ads that we've been hit over the head with over and over again. Yeah. And like I said to Rios before the show, like we were inundated with cheetah power surge commercials back sure. in the day. I didn't start drinking cheetah power surge all the time. So there is a level of personal responsibility for yeah, people, yeah, no, which I do get, has. but with yeah. the players, I think, and this is why I think we're, we, I think it's important for it to come out what exactly the violation uh, 100%. was. 100%. Um, because, you know, if it was something that would be considered insider information or something like that, I mean, sure. the, yeah. their their worry has to be the integrity of the game. We've seen match-fixing scandals in yeah. international soccer, in tennis, um, which is, I mean, one of those sports where it's an individual sport. You can throw a game. You can throw a thing. It's really... Um, like they can benefit from this and I mean, they're benefiting it from it big time. I and mean, when we're talking about HRR and how we're going to get into these uh, chips, uh, these clips from Mark Chipman, um, you yeah. know, about a bigger situation here in Winnipeg about, you know, ticketing and whatnot, like the NHL right now, their growth of the HRR has been on the backs of fans all the way along. Um, they don't have an NBA TV deal. They don't have an NFL TV deal. Yeah. So, there is big benefit to the players and the league from this. 
Um, but again, you get a cautionary tale like this, and uh, I think it certainly is going to serve as a big wake-up call to a lot of people that maybe didn't take it seriously because it hadn't happened before. Hey, just before we go, yeah. um, I know you're going to be following this game tonight and uh, whatnot. What do you and uh, uh, the team have coming up? I know the fellows in the Bomber beat will be looking forward to this finale moving yeah. on towards November 11th, and uh, you're going to be all over the Jets, I take it, in the sun? Yeah, I got a nice little story today recounting that goal in Edmonton that you would have watched in overtime there. Uh, just kind of talking a little bit about, you know, one, because Mark Scheifele made a, uh, you know, he, he he's already passed the Ilya Kulichuk in overtime winners for the franchise, but he moved into the overall points lead um, in franchise and overtime. But I was curious this week, you know, you have three guys with just incredible skill, right? How did they see that play? What did they do? What, what are you looking for in three-on-three -three overtime? So, we got that coming today, and then yeah, obviously, beverage tonight over the weekend, and then yeah, I'm I'm really looking forward to this bomber. I'm I'm really looking forward to the well, not I mean this game this week is kind of whatever, but it'd be nice to see Brady Oliveira, you know, get the to the two thousand yards all purpose yeah. right, hit the yeah. fifteen hundred. Yeah, if you want a betting line, if you want a betting line on yeah. that, Brady Oliveira over twenty or twenty one combined yards minus yeah. a million, um, yeah, because that and then. And yeah. then and under 20 or 5 or 30, because the second he gets that, he's right. out of the game. He's out. He's gone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see that. Yeah. Um, so. Thanks for doing this, Scotty. Yeah. Always good having you on the show. Yeah, appreciate it, House. Thanks, man. <laughs> good stuff. There is Scott Billick. Great segment. Uh, as I mentioned and promised you, we're going to dive into Mark Chipman's interview with Darren Drager uh, in just a minute. We'll get a little nice little bomber hit there. Um, most of the usual suspects uh, out for the game drew brown is going to start no willie jefferson no jackson jeffco no adam big hill um, no nick dembski um so this is just going to be uh, as we talked about with nick dembski yesterday get through and survive and if you missed if you're a bomber fan and you missed yesterday's show must watch nick dembski he was phenomenal um has quickly turned into one of if not my favorite guys to talk to on the winnipeg blue bombers and what a season he's had of course when we're talking bombers on the program we do it for princess auto proud sponsors of the blue and gold and of course the sponsors of the big princess auto tailgate zone which is going to be rocking no matter what the temperature is on november 11th things are going to get going there at 3 30 p.m and then it's go time for the Bombers and either the Stamps or the BC Lions in the West Final. Princess Auto is where you'll find the best deals on the most unique assortment of tools and equipment around. Everything you need to complete the projects on your list or start something new is at Princess Auto. Two locations in Winnipeg, Panet Road, Portage Avenue West. And you can always shop online 24-7, 365 at princessauto.com. Got to give a shout out to our pals at consolidated supply probably slowing down a little bit now for them what a summer i mean the leaders in irrigation systems artificial turf golf carts is the exclusive club car dealer in manitoba uh, but also other great options for your property including hot tubs which might come in handy around now not to mention not to mention amazing outdoor kitchens and of course they are the experts and this is 12 months a year in small engine parts and repair pop that out and see them consolidated supply showroom open to the public at 1395 niaqua road east and find out more online and check them out at cte.ca wow we got a great night of sports tonight we got to wait till tomorrow for the world series big slate of games in the national hockey league and of course nfl Bucks and Bills going at it. We'll touch on that in the cool bet lines. But whether you're looking to uh, maybe get a new Jet jersey with one of your new favorite players on the club, whether you're going to bundle up and get some new bomber gear for that West Final on November 11th, there's only one place to go when it comes to the best in licensed sports merchandise. That, of course, is Royal Sports. Um, and listen, while you're at Royal, uh, and if you've been involved in hockey you probably already know this, but for 40 years, Royal has been the undisputed hockey heavyweight in town. The best selection, best prices. It's all there at Royal Sports. So uh, get on down there, 750 Pembina Highway. Whether you're a player or a fan, Royal has you covered. Uh, 750 Pembina Highway, as I mentioned, and make sure to follow them on Instagram at Royal Sports Pembina. And, uh, you know, getting into this, we'll talk about the games tonight. We have a... Uh, Great slate of NHL games, an early Jet game, which is perfect because as soon as the Jet game is over, we'll be able to uh, focus in on this NFL Thursday nighter between the Buffalo Bills, who are kind of in a bad place right now, and the struggling Tampa Bay Buccaneers. 
Best place to uh, set up shop tonight with your friends, though, is Boston Pizza. They'll have the game on the big screens with full sound starting just after 6 p.m. And then at 7.15 kickoff in the National Football League, you'll be able to enjoy those ice-cold schooners, gourmet pizzas, and world-famous Boston's wings. And, uh, hey, if you're staying at home, you can always get the great taste of BP by ordering online at bostonpizza.com. All right, let's get Michael Remus back in here. And, uh, Remo, uh, I wanted to save this a little later on. I wanted to get today's game out of the way, but um, uh, I know Winnipeg Jet fans, um, everyone that cares about this team, um, you know, has been concerned with attendance, uh, certainly for these weekday games that they've had to start off the season. And it was... Uh, it's so a matter of time before we heard from Mark Chipman. And, um, you know, I, I just want to tell people, and I know there's been a lot of questions about why is why was this interview with Darren Drager? What about the local people? Um, I mentioned that we were going to have somebody on on the Friday of the first week. And I, I talked with people in communications, um, and I wasn't sure it was the right time to do it. Um, and I really wasn't sure that if it was anyone other than Mark Chipman, it would be the right thing to do. And um, I'll, I'll say this, um, you know, we're going to get to these clips and you can judge everything that you hear for yourself. Um, but in a situation like this, um, considering Mark's longstanding commitment to the community and the guy that worked so hard behind the scenes for many, many years to get to this point, um, for something as serious as this, um, you know, when it comes to where the franchise is and the work that needs to be done going forward, I'm sure you'd agree that, you know, Mark was definitely the person that needed to be in front of that microphone. And, um, you know, listen, with all due respect to us and every other local market, um, there's not a platform bigger um, that T and then TSN um, to get this message out. And uh, it was, um, I think everyone was quite interested to hear what the governor and um, the man that brought NHL hockey back to Winnipeg had to say about where things are at with the franchise. For sure. And they're going to have part of the, you know, part of the interview on intermission of today's game. Uh, they have the full 18 minute interview on the TSN website. And, you know, I'm trying, I'm thinking people are asking us, um, you know, why are they even doing this? And I think you look, go back to when the team came back, Gary Bettman saying, this building has got to be fall 13, you know, every night. And you, know, you go back to April I think a lot of people maybe were put a, you know took a bit of a offense to the Forever Winnipeg just saying hey we got to get sell some more season tickets. By the way, here's a clip of of the team leaving in 1996. And I, and I think maybe that it perked up the alarm bell so when you're going into the first game of the year or you know the home opener not sold out, you know, Tuesday's game against the Kings or last Tuesday it was, you know, lowest crowd ever and another uh, lowest crowd ever. And I think we just got to get used to that this is what it's going to be, but after hearing um, the interview with Mark Chippen, you know that, hey, the teams, they're not going anywhere. They know there's a problem. They're going to work to address it. Um, they're trying to be, you know, trying to be, you're asking my takeaways, trying to be competitive uh, and feel, feel the good hockey team. And, you know, this is a challenge for them, but they've had challenges before and they don't doubt uh, they'll be able to overcome it. Yeah. In the history of our lives, there's never been a bigger challenge than the pandemic. Um, I, I'm here to tell you, though, and I said this before on, on this program and whatever platform that I had, that there has been a bit of a reckoning coming within professional sports, period. Um, that, you know, the, uh, the, the inflation that we're all feeling, I mean, few things have inflated more um, than professional sports. Along with that goes the professional sports players' salaries. Um, and listen, you know, in a market of 32 teams where you're the smallest market by a considerable margin, the squeeze maybe is felt here a lot more earlier than it is other places. Um, like if you're losing 2,000 fans, but you've got a massive, massive uh, area to bring people in, maybe you don't really even notice that. And I mean, I'm sure that they're, all teams have probably lost fans because of their personal economic situation has changed um, I think it's just a lot more noticeable here right now. Um, I'll also say this, and, and and this is why when when we have somebody, uh, whether it's Mark or somebody else on the program talking about how they move forward, um, I think there's a lot of things that you know you wouldn't get in a Drager interview or on one of the local uh, lo local um, uh, outlets here. Um, really talk about what happens at the ground level, what needs to happen, and I've said this before. Um, is going to need a concerted effort 
one to one of representatives of True North and the Winnipeg Jets getting together with people in the business community, fans that they've lost, that frankly, um, as someone that's been in that business on the other side for a long time, I'm not sure they did enough or maybe the right things to prevent those people from canceling season tickets. I think it became quite easy for people to do that, and I'm not sure they really felt that it mattered to the folks on the other side, which it absolutely does. So, um, you know, there the work is just beginning right now for True North, and were they behind it? Yeah, probably. Um, but I think what you'll hear from from Mark is what um, you know it is his messaging to this community to Winnipeg Jet fans about where they're at right now, how they're going to go about improving it. Um, because I will say this: long term, uh, two thirds empty or two thirds full building in the smallest market with the costs of running an NHL team, it doesn't work. Um, but the plan is not to be where they're at. It's to get back to where they were. So let's hear from uh, some of what Mark Chipman said. And, you know, I'll put this out to you right now. I mean, we always do why not question of the day for not auto corporate Waverly and McGilvery. Um, you know, as you're hearing these comments, um, you know, if you have feedback on it, you know where to do it. It's in the chat. And you can always also hit us up on Twitter or X at Sports Talk WPG. And uh, we'll maybe put some of those together uh, for feedback later on or maybe for tomorrow's show. Um, listen, there's no doubt the pandemic was the uh, largest uh, disruptor to business in our lifetimes. And, um, you know, seated events bringing crowds together was hit very, very heavily. Uh, Mark mentioned about the pandemic effects on the season ticket base. The effects of the pandemic were were really significant. Um, I don't think we fully understood them um, until just this past spring. Uh, that that took a big chunk out of our season ticket base, um, and I think we learned a lot about the makeup of our uh, of our season ticket base as a consequence. You know, we were able to reflect and go back and look how we put it all together in the first place, and it was pretty unique that we. You know, in a very short period of time, uh, got 13,000 accounts or 13,000 seats sold. What we learned, and we knew, but we really learned, um, was that a large part of that um, of that account base were were groups of people that had had uh, partnered together. When the pandemic hit, and those groups saw some attrition, one or two accounts pulling out, the whole thing collapsed. All right, so um, you know, and listen, I think we know that. You know, a lot of people were um, were affected by the pandemic. And listen, it's, you know, resulted in a lot of fans probably being in very different situations than they were for the first 10 years. And that is a part of it. There has been a lot of talk about, um, you know, the, the corporate support of the Winnipeg Jets. A lot of this comes from the drive to 13,000. They did not have time to prioritize whether that was even fair or not i'm not sure that that probably would have been harshly criticized if they said hey we're gonna save seven thousand of the season tickets and we're gonna give them to companies and we're only gonna give them fans like you we know how much people like to complain in this town how would that have gone over they really didn't have the choice um they got it done very quickly fans showed up but so many massive majority of those seats were like many of you four people in on a pair of seats whoever could get them you split them up uh, mark expanded a little bit about you know learning on the lack of companies that own season tickets in winnipeg in comparison to other markets the other thing that happened was the way we went on sale was a saturday afternoon we didn't have a real uh, approach to our business community and so you know we've come to understand that we have a, a very low percentage of our season ticket base are held by companies lowest in the country by far mm -hmm. Um, and that, again, not, not the fault of anyone, just more a consequence of the way we went on sale. And, and so, um, you know, in there lies an opportunity for us. And, and that's been one of the steps that we've taken since last spring. We, you know, we, we spoke to the Chamber of Commerce and, and we kind of let this situation be known. And, and uh, since that time, we've been out doing a lot of presentations to business groups and mm -hmm. in an effort to try and, and, and gain some more uh, some more customer base there. All right. Um, uh, hey, just a little bit of breaking news, and this is great news for Jet fans and Bomber fans. The game on November 11th has been moved to 2 p.m. Uh, that's an afternoon game against the Dallas Stars. 
The Bombers will kick off at 5.30. So uh, we got an all-time Winnipeg double dip, starting it off at the uh, downtown arena at 2 p.m. And then I, and like many of you, will probably be finishing up that game. Hopefully the Jets can wax the stars that day, give a nice cushion, maybe get out a little earlier, jump on rapid transit, and get on down to the stadium for 5.30 to see the Bombers hopefully book a ticket to Hamilton and the Grey Cup. So 2 p.m. now on November 11th, originally scheduled for 3 p.m. Um, Mark Chipman, and listen, here's another clip. Just definitely believe that the corporate support is here in the market. Yeah, I really do. I mean, and I should say, like, I'm extraordinary, extraordinarily grateful for the amount of support that we have, um, you know, from the name on this building, from, from Canada Life's decision to take over the naming of this building, um, you know, through our, our partnership and our regional broadcast deal, through our, 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 our corporate sponsorship base has always been very strong. Our, our suites are sold. Um, there aren't really any levers for us to pull on um, other than people coming to games. So I believe the base is here. Um, I, I know the base is here. I mean, it's been here. Uh, and and we've, we've not had any challenge in renewing our corporate interest in what we do. It's, uh, we, we, we need to get more businesses, frankly, invested by way of, of ticket purchases as opposed to rink board sales, et cetera. Um, so there's Mark. Yeah, I mean, it is about butts and seats. Um, it's about butts and seats for a number of levels. First of all, um, you know, you're, the companies that are spending money to be on the rink boards, to advertise. I mean, I guess those are almost more TV properties, but everything that goes into, um, you know, is tied into eyeballs and people at games. Um, and, and I can tell you this, and I have a unique perspective on this. I mean, I spent many years selling, selling season tickets, for the Moose, um, originally as an 18-year-old in 1.0 in the summers for the Winnipeg Jets, for the Oilers, for Hockey Canada. Um, I would say 90% of the time I was, you know, calling or trying to connect with businesses who, frankly, have the ability both to use a full season ticket um, in a different way than Joe Fan does um, and probably the ability to do it. So um, I have no doubt that you know, coming off of this, there will be a really renewed sense of trying to connect with those individuals and those companies and trying to get them on board. Um, this has been a huge story. And I mean, it's a story here in Winnipeg. And anyone that saw me talk for the first half hour uh, last Wednesday on the program after being, and thanks again to our great Winnipeg sports talk crew that went to that first game, uh, with us. I mean, that was the best part of the game because it was rattling to be in the building, especially up in the upper bowl to see some of those holes. And to be honest, a lot of that isn't necessarily the corporate area. It was, you know, the the fans. And we'll get to, you know, some of the challenges about fans um, that they have had before because Mark does touch on this here. Um, but this has been a news story and we've heard a lot of people that frankly don't know a lot about our market or what's going on chime in about it. Um, but it's not surprising that it has raised alarm bells here and people have noticed. Uh, Mark talked about the lack of attendance early on this season in these games being newsworthy. We're the smallest market in the, in the league um, by you know, a fair measure. And so I think there's always been a curiosity as to whether we could sustain it here. I don't think people expected us to sell out 10 years in a row, but we did. And so, I mean, the fact that we did is what gives me the hope and confidence and uh, expectation that we'll be able to draw people back to watch the, the product that we've put together. So I, I'm, you know, look, I mean, businesses go through cycles. Um, what we're facing right now, I would tell you, is far less daunting, mm -hmm. far, far less challenging than it was to build this building in the first place and then to be patient and wait and, and put a plan together to get uh, a team again. Those were those took years, um, and and a lot of hard work from a, a lot of very talented people. Um, uh, and there's that uh, you know Mark Chipman just talking about you know the comparison to uh, you know what they went to get a team and you know as someone that was one of those guys going businesses to get season tickets. Um, you know it it would not have happened without the work and the support that this community gave the Manitoba Moose 
God knows I've talked about that year too. I mean, about, you know, trying to get people to maintain seats after losing a team and the disappointment of the first year in the IHL. Um, but it was formative for me. And I can tell you it was formative for Mark and a lot of people that were there at that time. And, um, you know, and, you know, what led to where this organization is at right now. Um, Mark talked about the uh, steps that, you know, now are being taken um, to try to curb this, reverse it and get people back in the building. We've taken a lot of uh, steps uh, to try and um, to try and, and get greater interest. Uh, you know, we've we've reduced uh, the number of games that are required to be purchased. We've become a lot more flexible in our in our pricing. We, we returned deposits. We did away with the multi year commitments. We've kept our ticket price, uh, and you know it's I'm, it's the second lowest of all the teams in Canada. We, we work hard at that, at keeping it as affordable as we can, and we've invested. Um, I think the one thing I can say um, unequivocally is, you know, I, and I learned this, Darren, from from that time frame that you're familiar with. You know, when when the team left, and because it was about it was that time that we got involved, the team. The team really belongs to the community. We, we get referred to as owners, but we're really more stewards, and, and that's, how we, that's how we approach this. Um, and, and I can tell you that that, you know, from, a, from personal, um, that, that message from Mark has been the same back in the Moose days, back to the beginning of the National Hockey League to now. Um, I know there's a lot of people, and listen, people say stuff on social media. This is someone that is as committed to this market and this community as anyone. And the work that went into this, when, to be honest, it seemed like an absolute pipe dream to get an NHL team back. Um, you know, I, I, I think as opposed to maybe listening to some people throwing stones, look at the body of work. Um, if you've had, if your confidence in... Um, in the governorship of this team has uh, has waned at all. Um, here's another interesting clip, and his talks to the goal of getting back to where we as a community were for the first 10 years with 330-odd straight sellouts. I really am. I mean, uh, I, like, I, I don't know how to say it other than that. Like, we've been through more challenging parts of this, mm -hmm. and I, I've, I'm born and raised here. I know this community. I know how passionate people are. Frankly, it's the biggest challenge of all this is 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 the responsibility you feel that you you know for the product on the ice and you don't you know how, how much people care and you don't want to let them down, and so you know we're we're deeply invested in this and and when I say we I mean I mean Chevy I don't know you know of anybody who cares more about about trying to put a product on the ice that people are proud of and I I honestly think he's done a really fine job of that I think. We've got a, a good team again this year. I think, you know, we've invested in, in our in our uh, in the core of our team, and very very excited about that. We turned six kids pro this summer. We have never done that before. Um, we've got you know what we think is a a really good pipeline of young players coming along, and so those are the things we focus on. And, and as long as we f we remain focused on the quality of our product. Uh, and it, you know, I, I believe it'll bring people back and, and we'll be sold out again. More from Mark Chipman in a conversation with TSN insider Darren Drager. The uh, full um, the full interview is available at TSN right now and uh, it will be shown uh, not the entire 18 minutes on tonight's broadcast. Um, listen, it's hard to have this conversation and if you go back to last Wednesday and what I was talking about, it's impossible if you've been in this market for longer than 40 years, not to think about 1996. Uh, Mark was asked about the difference between 1996 and where this team is at now. You have to look carefully at the circumstances that existed then versus today, right? There was no building. Right. And, and the prospect of one was tenuous. More importantly, there was no partnership with the players. There, there was not a collective agreement between the league and the players that allowed for the economics of hockey to work in Winnipeg back then. It wasn't until 2004 that that became a reality. And it's a very, very different world today than it was back then. We have this building and it's, it, it, it's, a, it's an NHL quality building. We have a great partnership with our players. 
we have that you know that allows for cost redistribution and um, and a salary cap, which allows a lot of teams to to exist in this league. So uh, I, I can see how somebody might how you could ask that question, you know, because it because it happened once is a concern that could happen again because you're the smallest market. I say, um, you know, like not on our watch. All right. So, uh, you know, a, a very important question, I think, that everyone was looking uh, for an answer to. Um, this clip is more on the focus of right now and uh, maybe not thinking or worrying about it if the uh, if things don't change in a positive way from the way that this season has started in the stands. Wait, which number did you want here? This is 10. Oh. We're focused on the now. We're focused on, you know, Chevy's focused on his job of, uh, and, and, and of, you know, delivering the product. And we've got a plan in place to engage our community again in, in a respectful way. And, and I have to say, I mean, we've got to be very respectful of, of people's choices. Like, um, you know, people are dealing with, a whole range of issues right now that they they didn't in our first 10 years right. you know we're dealing with inflationary pressures on people that have that hit people's discretionary uh, spending ability we have to be incredibly respectful of that right we're dealing with issues in our city that we didn't have 12 years ago and they're not unique to winnipeg but we've got our challenges in our downtown with you know with um with a set of circumstances around mental health and, and addiction and, and resulting homelessness that are that are really difficult, you know, and 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 we're glad to be a part of, you know, trying to find some solutions there. Um, this next clip is, uh, uh, listen, it as I said, you know, Wednesday, I've had a million conversations with people off air over the last few weeks about, you know, about the team and. You know, people love this team. They know how important it is to the city, and there is an element of uh, of shock and, and of worry. Um, you know, of what could happen. I think we've heard, you know, from Mark on on that. Um, this was an interesting message, though, to uh, to people to to not be worrying about the Winnipeg Jets. And this is a job that the people inside that organization need to identify, turn around, and make happen. Uh, quote: It's on us. This business can be very consuming because it's so covered, mm -hmm. right? And it takes up so much of the oxygen in our city. You tend, you, you know, it'd be easy to think, well, everybody should be worried about us. Well, that that be that would be very unwise, right? Everybody's got their own their own real world that they're living in. So it's not for us to say, hey, uh, come and worry about the Winnipeg Jets, right? And 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 to 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 take offense at the fact that we're not sold out right now. I mean, that, 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 that would be really foolish and unthoughtful. So um, we know the support's here. We just got to get back to it. It's going to be, it's, it's on us to do that. It's going to take some hard work. But we, we're accustomed to that, you know. So we had a good ride for 10 years, Darren. We really did. Yeah. And, and we got, you know, we got, took a heavy shot with the pandemic. We got to recover from it. That's on us. All right, uh, Mark Chipman, Winnipeg Jets governor. A couple more clips. Uh, we'll finish off with a message to fans, but this one is a little bit more on the hockey side of things. And, I mean, you know, in our conversations here, when we haven't been talking about this the last couple of years, you know, the trend of the team, um, God knows there's been a lot of blow-it-up mentions in chat. And, um, you know, this team has made significant changes. Obviously, the Dubois trade, Blake Wheeler moving on. Um, but this is a clip on not rebuilding and, of course, the investments that they recently made on Thanksgiving with the dual contract extensions to Connor Hellebuck and Mark Shifley. You could reduce the costs. That's yeah. the quickest way to do this is to cut player costs. Again, you know, like I do this for a living, so I, I examine those, those kinds of options really thoughtfully I, or try to. The word rebuild is really easy to throw around because it sounds good. Yep. And I, you know, I've gone, I've gone through every, every team that's said rebuild. It's expensive. It's expensive and it's, it takes a long time. And people think, well, rebuild is a year or two. No. Rebuilds at a minimum, they're five, 
that can be seven. Yeah. I can show you some that are 10, 12 years in the making. Uh, our market doesn't deserve that right now. You, you can't take a team that's made the playoffs five of the last six years and take it apart and expect your fan base to support that. If you have the means of, of, of keeping it together, you got to keep it together. And as I said, we got some really exciting young talent coming that we, you know, will be, can be added to our core over the next few years. So this is, you know, I mean, Darren, I, any, anybody worth their salt in this game is trying to win. Like that's what yeah. this, you know, we're trying to, we're trying to win. And, and, I, and I, if our fans ever get the sense that we're not trying to win, then we're in real trouble. All right, there is that. I was, a, you know, a, a really interesting clip, kind of, you know, as far as the, uh, you know, the focus of where this organization is at from a hockey perspective. And you know, speaking of rebuilds, I mean, we got a great example of that tonight. I know the Wings have looked great in their first six, seven games of the season, but this was a team that for twenty years was the measuring stick in a lot of ways of the National Hockey League, and it has been very, very lean for the last number of seasons in uh, in Detroit, and, and nothing is guaranteed. Uh, one final clip, and again, the entire piece is available at TSN. I suggest you watch it in its entirety. Um, he finished off, uh, Darren Drager asked him, uh, you know, to finish off with a message to fans of the Winnipeg Jets. We're all in. Like, this is, uh, we have been for for almost three decades now, and um, this is what we do, and and we're working really hard at it. Like, I, I can tell you that, our group, we got 300 people full time with us that are taking this very seriously and are working very, very hard at, at earning uh, that customer base back. And we have every confidence that we will. Uh, there it is. So, uh, I mean, feel free to give your thoughts in it. Um, I'll say this. I mean, listen, I, I know Mark quite well. It's not like I talk to him very often. Once in a while, I'll bump into him and uh, say hi and, you know, wish him luck. But I do think that, you know, considering the situation right now, the conversations that we've been having around this city, uh, I think it was important that Mark got out there. Um, listen, would we love to hear more from Mark? Absolutely. He's a pretty quiet, I think you can notice, a very, you know, a humble guy, a one that feels the weight of the responsibility on it. Um, and Remus, he said pretty clearly that it, the responsibility is on us, i.e. True North Sports and Entertainment, every person that has the uh, the privilege of working in the National Hockey League and for that organization right now. The work is um, it's in front of our faces pretty much every time the Winnipeg Jets are playing right now. Things are being done right now, and uh, I think we can all hope that um, you know this is sort of a, in some ways, a turning point for the organization to do things that they need to do um, to re-engage or to engage with the corporate community in a way that maybe they hadn't been before. And something that maybe wasn't touched on this that wouldn't get touched on in, you know, in a national interview like that. And it is more a micro than a macro uh, point of it all. Um, but, you know, really make a concerted effort to reconnect, do some creative ways to bring back people that, you know, if you had six people that were part of your group and two people left and that was the end of the group, to get the people that want to and have the ability ways to connect with others, to get back in, to be season ticket holders again, even if it's unreasonable to think that many people are going to be able to go to each and every game. But uh, overall, certainly from the feedback I've seen, I thought it was well received and I thought it was the proper message and the proper tone at the time. Yeah, I, I would agree. I acknowledge that it's on them and you know, it's just certainly tough times for a number of people. Not everyone... Uh, can afford to go, and they're going to have to do their best to engage the business community. He did mention uh, going presentations, and I don't know if they're going to have another uh, campaign ahead. I did, you know, I did appreciate the comments at the end saying, "Hey, you know, we're still trying to win. We don't want to re. We're not looking to do a rebuild because it's not guaranteed." We're looking. You know, people mentioned Buffalo and Chad have been doing this for twelve seasons, hasn't gone well. Detroit now, what are they like seven seasons? And you know, you could go down the list, Chicago. It's going to take a while to get back. I mean, there's a number of teams. You know, anytime an owner says, hey, we're committed to winning, and he's right, he could, they could just say, hey, you know what, we don't have uh, the revenue we used to. We're going to cut salary, you know, try to save some money. But, hey, they are going all in. You can debate if it's, you know, what you think about giving 30-year-old you know, 30 year old players eight-year contract. But they say, hey, we need these guys to win. So they're paying Chafley and Hellbuck. Uh, I think you got to admire that because, look, you see in the States, 
or in baseball, there's some pretty crappy owners there, uh, like the ones in Owen. So I think you have an owner here who certainly cares about the community, cares about the fans, mm -hmm. uh, cares on putting a good product on the ice. And uh, we'll see how it goes uh, for the Jets this season. Three and three could easily be a bit more than that. So I'm looking forward to uh, you know the next stage of the season and tonight. Yeah, um, you know, and, and Doug, <laughs> Doug Phil is in chat, and, and this is the comment. True North bought the Jets for $170 million. Today, the franchise would be worth at least eight hundred. dollars That's a damn good ROI for 13 years. You are correct, Doug. Uh, here's the thing, though. It's worth $800 million if you sell it. Uh, it Maybe even worth more if you sell it. Um, you know, a pretty well-run organization with a good team. Yeah, it's worth it. But I, I can tell you right now, it ain't worth that in Winnipeg um, with, you know, with 70% attendance. Um, and I can absolutely guarantee you without any equivocation that the plan is not to, was not to get a team to build it up and then to sell it and have it move. And I think that's very clear from this, uh, from this interview. Um, so while absolutely the value of teams in the National Hockey League have gone up and you are, you are correct, um, never will, I, I mean, this is, this is not about getting 800 million saying, well, it ended up being a good business deal and the team is somewhere else. Um, and obviously, I mean, people aren't coming in <laughs> looking to buy, you know, buy a team in a, in a market that's struggling, if it ever got to the point that that team had to be sold, um, it wouldn't just be to bring a new owner in and turn it all over here in Winnipeg. I mean, come on. So I, you know, I just thought I'd, I'd mention that. But, um, I mean, there's no doubt that this business is, these, these teams are as valuable as they've ever been. The cost of being a member of the National Hockey League are as busy as it's ever been, and that's a, put a real squeeze on our city right now. Uh, but anyways, those are, you know, what would love comments in the chat um particularly if you're uh, watching this after the live portion of it let us know what you thought in the youtube comments um, and we're always open to feedback uh both direct messages and straight up at uh, twitter at sports talk wpg um i mentioned that game on uh, monday where the team is back against the uh, new york rangers blake wheeler's return halloween game should be a lot of fun We'll see a lot of uh, witches. I'm sure Travis Kelsey and Taylor Swift will be in attendance. Uh, Barbie and Ken. And you know what? We'll be in attendance for every single Jet game this year. I can guarantee you that. Uh, 1919 and Generic Lager, our favorite local beers from our friends over at Little Brown Jug. And uh, you'll be able to have a 1919 at Canada Life Center on November 11th at 2 p.m. Now that the game is boot moved up and then... Uh, Grab a 1919 and watch the Bombers at 5.30 p.m. as Little Brown Jug is now official partners with both the Jets and the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Uh, and, hey, no better place to uh, try Little Brown Jug outside of the uh, stadium in the arena than the brewery and tap room down on William Avenue. Pop there for uh, all the incredible offerings we have from Manitoba's favorite local brewery. And don't forget, you can check them out online. Order online with local delivery options at littlebrownjug.ca. And hey, uh, I've got to give a shout out to Nick and Nikki DQ. Great support of Winnipeg Sports Talk. I know it's a little snowy outside right now, uh, but hey, I'll tell you what, those blizzards are good 12 months a year. This is, a, this is a city that prides itself on being a slurpy capital. You don't think we're down with blizzards after a little bit of snowfalls? Hell yeah. Not to mention those amazing stack burgers and so much more. Pop by and see Nick and Nikki, great supporters of ours. DQ Northgate, DQ Polar Park, DQ St. Anne's, and the DQ in Niverville. And don't forget, they just opened up the new Pita Pit in Niverville. Healthy, fresh, fresh, delicious, and fast. It's all there for you. Great catering as well. Always hit them up at Pita Pit Niverville on X for catering. And hey, when you pop in, tell them the boys from Winnipeg Sports Talk sent you. Um, all right, let's get to the cool bet lines tonight before we finish. Lots of talk about lines and betting on hockey today. Um, as I say, well, we'll get to the exclusives in just a minute. I've been red hot. We got another one for you cooking up tonight. But, Remo, let me ask you this, and I don't know if you've looked at it yet. What would you have thought the betting line tonight would be for the 3-3 three and three Jets on the road in Detroit mm -hmm. against the 5-1-1 one one Wings considering the start that they've had? We did mention it in the the first part of the show. We did mention it, but 
I mean, you would think that Detroit is red hot. They're home. They would be a favorite, right? But uh, you kind of already, you already forgot the conversation we had. Oh, yeah, I, I thought we had it on the lock shop, but the show's just so long. <laughs> um, but yeah, anyways, I mean, the Jets are one minus one twenty three favorites in this game tonight, and Detroit is plus one hundred five. I'll be honest, I thought it would have been reversed, and the Jets would have been getting plus money, um, but in fact. Um, it is the Jets that are the favorite. Um, maybe they know Hellebuck's heating up and he and Kyle Connor are coming home. Um, maybe the bookies kind of put more stock into some of the advanced numbers in the advanced stats that maybe aren't as kind to the win- to the Detroit Red Wings and you know maybe show the Jets could have a better record than maybe they have as of late right now. I'm not sure. All I know is that it's minus 120 for the Winnipeg Jets tonight. couple things that I do like in this game tonight. We're kind of focusing in on the homecoming boys. Um, shot props. I love Kyle Connor over three and a half shots at plus yeah. 115 tonight. And I think there may be a little sprinkle on a Kyle Connor goal, which when we did the lock shop was plus 134. I see uh, we've moved the line a little bit now, plus 131 for Kyle Connor. Um, plus 145 for Mark Shifley and plus 215 for Nikolai Ehlers. And there's a guy that's due right now. He's going to score sooner or later. Maybe we got a little sprinkle on uh, on fly for tonight uh, tonight as well. Other Jets to score. Ayafalo plus 245. Nino Niederreiter plus 290. Perfetti plus 330. Um, Josh Morrissey plus 395. And his old pal Andrew Kopp at plus 390. A lot of connections between these two teams, uh, both because of former, um, it with Ben Sherratt and Andrew Cott playing on the wings, and you know a number of guys that'll be looking for big games as Billick laid out with uh, friends and family there coming into Little Caesars to see them play tonight for the Jets. Yeah, you know we always talk about uh, Connor Hellebuck and Kyle Connor. Um, the Jets website, Mitch Clinton, did catch up with Kyle Connor, saying, "Hey, he's got some family there," but. You know, I didn't take into account, well, yeah, Paul, Cole Perfetti from Whitby or uh, Mark Shafley in the Kitchener area. That is pretty close to Detroit. A lot of Canadians uh, just over the border in Windsor as well. So, uh, well, yeah, we'll see. Yeah, Sherrod Cobb, there's some nice former Jets on this one. And Andrew Cobb having an, off to a nice start with the Red Wings there. You got it. Uh, other games tonight. Bruins, what a start. I, they just keep on doing it. Um, huge favorite, minus 299 at home against the Ducks. Ducks plus 245. The Kraken plus 172 home uh, road underdogs against the Canes, who had sort of a rough road trip, two and four. They're finally back home. Canes are minus 205. We mentioned the Jet game. We've also got the Habs and Canadians, or sorry, the Blue Jackets and Canadians. Seabus minus 105. The Habs minus 112. Cole Caulfield prop plus 123 to score. Um, Avalanche Penguins tonight. I know there's a fun uh, there's a fun uh, prop in the Cool Bet exclusives for the uh, Cole Harbor kids to score. Pro- Crosby and McKinnon both to get one. Uh, but the Abs are minus 133 favorites. Penguins coming off that loss to Dallas at plus 121. The Lowly Sharks are in Tampa to take on the Lightning. Sharks plus two th- 235. Tampa, the huge minus 284 home favorite. This is a, this should be a good game. The Sens will be in an ornery mood. Never mind the Shane Pinto situation. They're lost to Buffalo on Tuesday night. I think we'll have them ready to go. I like Ottawa tonight. Ottawa plus 105 against the Islanders at minus 123. The Wild are in Philly to take on the Flyers. I love this number for Minnesota, minus 111 in Philly. I know Philly's had a couple nice home wins. I don't think they catch the wild sleeping tonight. Give me Minnesota minus 111 in Philly against the Flyers, who are minus 106. And uh, we've got the Dallas Stars taking on the Leafs as well. Interesting game. Leafs minus 103, Stars minus 114. And then the two struggling Alberta teams finish up the slate. St. Louis, after their loss in Winnipeg, is in Calgary. St. Louis plus 160, Flames minus 190. And the Rangers and Oilers going at it tonight as well. Oilers one four and one on the season. Oilers a road under, or sorry, a home dog plus one twelve, and the Rangers minus one thirty two. Let me quickly get you over to the exclusives, because not to bury Horowitz myself too much, but I have been absolutely red hot. Even won a two game NBA parlay last night from the lock shop. Shout out to the Raptors and Canadian Shield Gilgis uh, Shea Gilgis Alexander. 
The ride with Huss tonight, we've got the Lightning on the puck line against the Sharks, minus one and a half. The Ottawa Senators money line to win any in any fashion against the Islanders and the Wild money line in Philly. When I built that one in the uh, in the computer, it was plus 623. They've juiced it to plus 690. So if you want to uh, ride, looking to make it four days in a row with the winning parley in the lock shop, that's what I'm riding tonight. Tampa minus one and a half, Ottawa and Minnesota at plus 690. We've got a couple of, of other options for you. Um, Patty's got one in, Dusty. Oh, and we do have a... We've got our we've got our partner parlay for where each one of us puts in a pick for the Bills game tonight. Uh, I've got Dalton Kincaid plus 38 or more receiving yards, and then uh, Dusty and Patty have Josh Allen 22 or more rushing yards, and James Cook 46 or more rushing yards. That one's in there at plus 590. So uh, lots of options over at Coolbet if you want to uh, get in on it tonight. Um, Remo, just to finish up the program, you know, obviously we're talking and hearing the clips from Mark Sh- from Mark Chipman, um, you know, about mostly, you know, the business of hockey and where this team is at and, you know, trying to get more asses in seats and make up for the lost season tickets that have sort of drained over the last few years. But just going back to that comment that, you know, he made, you know, about where the team is at right now and you kind of expanding on it, I have to tell you, I'm actually, just from a hockey perspective, looking at the team, where things are at, the prospects that the team has drafted already, the young players that are playing with the Moose, their start, Barlow McGrory, you know, getting ready to turn pro potentially next year. I have to admit, I'm as optimistic about the future of where the team is at, both present and, you know, the near future, the next few years today, as I think I have been since things sort of, turned around and went the wrong direction at around mid-season of the 2018-19 season. I can see where you're coming from. They definitely have increased the prospect pool the last couple of years. Colby Barlow is off to a good start uh, in the OHL. And Rucker McCrory, uh again, a, a great start in NCAA. And you know, there are people, we got a, an HWST Discord uh, server, link in the description. Now people were saying yesterday, just speculating, like, you think Rutger, with the season he's having... Would they sign him at the end of the season and bring him in to help with the playoffs like Toronto did last year with Matthew Nyes or remember the Ooh, Jets great signing question. if the Jets signed Andrew Kopp what on the last on the last day? So uh, I almost wonder if if he ha- continues to have this strong season, you know, plays uh, at the World Juniors and you know again it's going going well for him. Does he make the jump this year? So that's I mean I don't know I'm just, I have no idea that's just spitballing, but they do have a number of young players where. No, maybe not this year, but in you know in two or three, once these guys have graduated, and you still have you know Shafley, Hellebuck, Connor, Morrissey, and you have these younger guys pushing on ELCs. Um, you know, maybe think you know brighter future is uh, ahead for the Jets, but they are still competitive now. We have projected them to make the playoffs, and uh, they're going to keep that going here tonight against Detroit, and Saturday Montreal, and uh, Monday New York Rangers. Yeah, and you know what? And speaking of those prospects, um, you know, we'll uh, you know we'll stay on top. I mean, both McGrory and McGrory's having a phenomenal season right now in uh, in the NCAA. Colby Barlow's doing Colby Barlow things there in Owen Sound, and it's been a nice start for the uh, for the young Jet prospects: Brad Lambert to uh, Chibrikov, Chaz Lucius with the Moose. The Moose are uh, beginning their road portion of the schedule. Um, Friday and Saturday, they are in Texas to take on the Stars. I believe the te- Stars play out of Austin. Um, and then they're back November 4th and 5th for the Rockford Ice Hogs. Um, you know, we'll have to. I guess tomorrow's probably going to be a real busy day on this program and for the Moose with it being game day. But Monday or Tuesday of next week, we'll try and get Fink on for the latest from the Moose. And uh, maybe we'll even catch up and uh, try and grab one of those players and have them on the program next week. We get to see how things are going early on for... Uh, some young players with bright futures with the organization that have had a great start for the season. But tonight, our focus is on Motown, Little Caesars Arena, homecoming for Connor Hellebuck and Kyle Connor as the Jets take on the Wings. I had said yesterday this game was 6.30 because the Wings games were always at 6.30. Uh, it's at 6 tonight. So uh, don't blame me for uh, for making you late. Uh, get ready for that 6 o'clock game. And again, 
if you want to read, uh, watch the entire interview with uh, Mark Chipman with Darren Drager, it is up at TSN right now, and you will see a bunch of it on tonight's Jets broadcast on TSN. Great show today. Thanks for everyone. Thanks for your comments. Thanks for your input. Hit that thumbs up button, by the way, if you haven't already, please. And uh, make sure you're subscribed to the channel if you haven't as well. Tell a friend about Winnipeg Sports Talk. Enjoy the game tonight and join us for a big Friday show. Ken Weeb's going to join us uh, from Montreal after tonight's game in Detroit. We'll break it down with Kenny. Hacksaw will jump on. We'll do a marble race. Uh, we'll have uh, a lot going on tomorrow, day one of the World Series. Recap of tonight's game. A look ahead to the game against Montreal on Saturday. You know the place to be, 1 p.m. each and every weekday, Monday to Friday, right here on Winnipeg Sports Talk. Enjoy the game, everyone. We'll see you tomorrow at 1. Oh, my oh, God! Oh! Oh! Shut it down! Oh, no! Let's go home! Thanks for tuning in to Winnipeg Sports Talk Daily. Make sure to subscribe on YouTube. 